live on a Wednesday night at Utah Grizzlies Hockey as it's the first of three straight meetings between the Grizzlies and the Idaho Steelheads. Hi, everybody. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Carenza. We're in the lobby at Maverick Center, and we're watching on the video feed tonight as the Grizzlies take on the Idaho Steelheads in really what should be an interesting matchup. Idaho's trying to set some history here this evening as they've got 30 wins at home. In fact, they are 30 and 4 at Idaho Central Arena this year. And with a victory tonight, they can set a new league record as they are currently tied with the 2018 2019 Cincinnati Cyclones with 30 home victories this season. Although, fun fact, the Grizzlies did defeat Cincinnati at, uh, at Cincinnati that particular year. And so Utah has won in places that can be pretty difficult in their franchise history. And Utah is 3-5 and five at Idaho Central Arena this year. So even though the Grizzlies have had some issues defeating Idaho at Maverick Center, Utah has proven they can win at Idaho Central Arena. It's kind of interesting when you think about the Grizzlies, who are 3-5 and five in Idaho this year. Well, Idaho at home against teams not named the Utah Grizzlies this season, 25-1. and one. So tough task for the Grizzlies tonight. They're going up against an Idaho Steelheads team, which has clinched the division. They've clinched everything, and they're going to be the one seed in the Mountain Division Championship. In fact, you can get first and second game playoff <laughs> tickets on sale at IdahoSteelheads.com. They're already on sale, and they already know uh, where they're going to be for game one of the playoffs. They have no clue who's going to be, who their opponent's going to be, and really we don't know as the Grizzlies trying to battle for a playoff spot in Utah right now is in fifth place. With 67 standings points, and Utah is coming off an outstanding week as they swept the Wichita Thunder in a three-game series. They outscored the Thunder 19 to 11, and Utah has been playing outstanding hockey as of late as they are nine and five in their last 14 games. Watch out for Cameron Wright, who had one goal and two assists on Saturday night in Utah's 5-3 victory. Wright leads the league with eight game-winning goals, and he's been one of Utah's best scorers this season. In fact, he does lead the Grizzlies with 52 points this season. Utah has been a high-powered offense as of late. They have scored 93 goals over their last 22 games. I remember, it's been a long time since the Grizzlies have faced the Stillheads. It's Utah's first meeting against the Stillheads since January 16th, and that was a Grizzlies victory. I remember, it was Martin Luther King Day, and the Grizzlies got a 4-1 victory at Maverick Center against the Stillheads. So Utah, even though they're 4-11 and against Idaho this season, they have won two of their last three meetings against the Idaho Steelhead. So it should be a fun one here tonight. Dylan Wells will get the, the start in net for Idaho. He'll be making his Steelhead's debut. Wells played in one NHL game earlier this season with the Chicago Blackhawks, and he's also appeared with two different AHL teams. And he'll be going up against Trent Miner, who gets the start for the Grizzlies. Miner's got a record of 14-14-2 with two shutouts this season. Miner, the Grizzlies shutout king. He's got nine career shutouts in a Grizzlies uniform and seven career professional shutouts well some roster moves were made by the grizzlies there's a reunion for a grizzly it was outstanding last year we'll talk about that and we'll also go over the two new grizzlies who are both making their professional debuts tonight as we'll talk with guy Carenza and get his thoughts on tonight's game we'll also get his pick for the optum first goal of the game as we're in business on a wednesday night and you're listening to the utah grizzlies pregame report presented by rio tinto kennecott Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account Last season, the Grizzlies won the division title for the first time in team history as Grizzlies had arguably the best defensive pairing in the league in Charles Edward Dastu and Luke Martin. Martin and Ben Tardif were each named to the league's all-rookie team. Luke Martin started the year with an AHL contract with the Hartford Wolfpack. He was reassigned to the Jacksonville Icemen. He played in 25 games with Jacksonville this season. He had eight goals and 17 assists. 
In fact, Martin was outstanding in a three-game series against the Grizzlies in early December where he had two goals and three assists in Jacksonville, swept Utah in a three-game series. But on New Year's Eve, Luke Martin was traded from Hartford to the Colorado Eagles for forward Ben Tardif. Now, I mentioned Tardif and Martin reached name to the league's all-rookie team last year. Well, Luke Martin spent some time with the Colorado Eagles earlier this season, appearing in 28 games where he had one goal and eight assists and a plus-eight rating. Well, earlier this week, Luke Martin was reassigned to the Grizzlies, and he is back in a Grizzlies uniform wearing the same jersey number he wore last season, which is number 44. But he's not the only new addition to the Grizzlies, as defenseman Kyle Mayhew is making his professional debut. He was a key defenseman on the De University of Denver 2022 National Championship team. He had a five-year college career at the University of Denver, and last season was a teammate with Grizzlies forward Cameron Wright. Also making his professional debut is Ford Mick Messner, who started his college career at the University of Wisconsin and played there for two seasons from 2018 through 2020. And then he transferred to Merrimack College, where he spent three seasons there from 2020 through 2023. Messner played with current Grizzlies forward Christian Simeone during the 2020-21 season. Messner had five goals and four assists and a plus six rating in 35 games with Merrimack earlier this season. He'll be wearing number 25, and in a separate roster move, forward Vladislav Mikalchuk was released from the club. Mikalchuk appeared in 31 games and had four goals and eight assists. So bring Guy Krenz to the broadcasting guy. Luke Martin is on the top defensive pairing with James Shear tonight, and I don't think you can underestimate the importance that this move has. The Grizzlies needed a, a defenseman, in particular maybe a defenseman who can contribute on the power play and if Luke Martin is motivated, he could be a great addition to this club. Oh, Tyson, it's great to see good old number 44 back in the Grizzlies lineup, Luke Martin. I think I mean, just the player Luke Martin is, is he, and what he brings to the table is fantastic. But I think the best part about Luke Martin is the familiarity he has with the Grizzlies franchise, with Ryan Kanas, which some of the players on this team I think that right there is a big key. I think Luke Martin is going to be able to jump right back into the line and pick up where he left off. Great player. Great to see him back in a Grizzlies uniform. It'll be interesting to see Kyle Mayhew wearing number six tonight. He's not a very big guy, listed at 5'8 and 160 pounds. But Mayhew's, he was part of a great college program at the University of Denver. So he's part of a winning culture. He knows what it takes to win. And even though he's not very big, I've been told that he's pretty quick and shifty. And I'm really interested in seeing what Kyle Mayhew is able to do the rest of the season. Yeah, I am too, Tyson. I really think, uh, I don't think really size really matters for him. I think this is a guy that's really been a, a positive player in terms of plus minus over the course of his college career. This is a guy that seems like he knows how to handle the puck, uh, can be efficient on the blue line and keep the puck out of his own net. You pair him with a guy like Aaron Tho, maybe you have a yin and a yang, a guy that knows how to cheat up and play offensively. And Aaron Tho, and you pair him with a defensive-minded defenseman in Mayhew, you might have yourself a really good pairing there. We'll see if the Victoria Royals duo of Taryn Pfizer and Brandon Cutler, if they get going tonight. Uh, you think about the series against Wichita, and in particular in the first two games, that series, Taryn Pfizer and Brandon Cutler were outstanding. And against Idaho, a team that's got three outstanding forward lines, that pairing is going to have to get going for the Grizzlies tonight. I agree, Tyson. I think not just that pairing, but everybody on the Grizzlies team is going to have to be on their A game when going up against the Idaho Steelheads. I mean, we know that the Steelheads are historically good. They're going to be a tough opponent for the Grizzlies on any given night just because it's the Grizzlies and the Steelheads. It's a big rivalry. And so you think about that Victoria Royals connection, which has been heating up as of late. Uh, I think if you're making one of those guys your pick for Optum first goal of the game, and it seems like 71 Cowboys on YouTube is already picking Brandon Cutler, it's a good pick. It seems like almost every single game they're a lock to make something happen. So, I mean, the connection just grows stronger by every, every single game. Great duo. Great line. Keaton Jamison and the rooster Jordan Martell have been outstanding as of late as Martell's got a goal and a point in four straight games, and Keaton Jamison's on a current six-game point scoring streak, and those two have been outstanding. I mean, Martell is a plus 10 in 39 games of the Grizzlies, and Keaton Jamison seems to be a consistent force game in and game out. I don't think anybody on this team is hotter than Keaton Jamison right now, Tyson. I mean, nine points in his last six games, he's just been on an absolute heater. And you add the rooster Jordan Martell, you give him that chemistry. Martell's been fantastic ever since he came over in that trade from Fort Wayne. Really what the Grizzlies needed. He's been a spark all season long for the Grizzlies. And Jamison, you mentioned that consistency. He's been really consistent as of late, and that's exactly what the Grizzlies needed when Sekos went down, Ray B. Strong, Johnny Walker, all the injuries hit. That's exactly what you needed from a guy like Keaton Jamison. So I really like the way he's playing. 
Who's your pick for the Optum first school of the game? Optum is committed to making healthcare work better, leading the way to better experiences, better health, and lower costs for you. I'm going to go with Cameron Wright as my pick for the Optum first school of the game. He leads the Grizzlies with four goals against Idaho this year, and Cameron Wright, 24 goals this season to go along with 52 points. The 52 points lead the Grizzlies, or actually 55 points, even better, 55 points for Cameron Wright this season, which lead the club. And he's my pick for the Optum first goal of the game. Who's your pick? Well, I just sung his praises, Tyson. I think I got to go with the hot hand. I'm going to go with Keaton Jamison. I think he continues uh, on his goal scoring pace. Give me Jamo for the first goal of the game. You got Keaton Jamison. That's certainly a good pick. It's going to be an interesting matchup tonight. The Grizzlies and the Steelheads, for my money, the best rivalry in the league. When we come back in one minute, we'll give you the starting lineups for both teams. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Krenzes. We're hanging out at the lobby at Maverick Center. Let's get to the lineups for both teams. First for the visiting Utah Grizzlies. We're led by second-year head coach Ryan Kanasiewicz. His assistant is the Sandy Utah native Jared Pike. The Grizzlies have a record of 32, 31, and 3 with 67 standings points. They're 16, 15, and 3 on the road. Starting in net's going to be Trent Miner. He's got a record of 14, 14, and 2 with two shutouts, a 3.24 goals against an average and 904 save percentage. Miner is in the second year of a three year NHL entry level deal. He is 6'1 and 198 pounds. Starting defensive pairing, James Shearer, number 10, is one starting defenseman. He's got a plus four rating and five goals and 17 assists in 48 games. And Luke Martin, that's right, Luke Martin is back. In a Grizzlies uniform in 25 games with Jacksonville earlier this year, he had eight goals and 17 assists. Martin was part of the best defensive pairing in the league last season, and he was a big part as to why the Grizzlies won the division title last year for the first time in club history. In 59 games last season for the Grizzlies, he had 10 goals and 33 assists for 43 points, and in the playoffs, he had two goals and 10 assists in 17 games. Martin will be wearing number 44, which is what he wore last season, He's in his second year out of Michigan, a, the University of Michigan. He's 6'3 and 215 pounds. He's got a plus four rating this season. So the starting defensive pairing is Sure and Luke Martin. The other defenseman tonight, Corey Thomas, the former Steelhead, will be in there. Thomas has four assists in his last three games. He'll be paired up with the captain, Connor McDonald, who leads the Grizzlies with a plus 11 rating. Aaron Tho is outstanding in the Wichita series. And so for Aaron Tho, he just has to visualize the Wichita Thunder being the opponent tonight, and he'll be just fine. He had five goals against Wichita this season in five games, and he'll be paired up with Kyle Mayhew, who's making his professional debut. Mayhew is 5'8 and 160 pounds. He just completed a five-year college career at the University of Denver. He is part of DU's national championship team back in 2022. So scratches defensively for the Grizzlies tonight include Victor Bartley and Jacob Semek, as well as Bryson Martin. And it's unfortunate that Jacob Semek and Johnny Walker are both out of the Grizzlies lineup, considering one of Idaho's defensemen, Demetrius, Demetrius Comantis, is a, a former Arizona State product who was just recently signed by the Idaho Steelheads. So Comantis uh, was probably hoping to play against Johnny Walker and Jacob Semek. Unfortunately, the two ASU products are out of the Grizzlies lineup. Starting forwards for the Grizzlies, Terran Pfizer will be in there. He'll be wearing number 80, leads the Grizzlies with 25 goals in 56 games. Tyler Penner, the Grizzlies' Iron Man, yep, he's in the lineup, and he'll be starting wearing number 21. Penner's got 12 goals and 12 assists in 66 games. And Brandon Cutler, who in 26 games has 26 points, 13 goals and 13 assists. Cutler will be wearing number 29. Other forwards we're expected to see tonight include 
Mick Messner, who's making his professional debut. Messner played at Merrimack College for three seasons. He's 5'11 and 193 pounds. He'll be wearing number 25. Cameron Wright's also going to be in the Grizzlies lineup. He leads the Grizzlies with 55 points. Dylan Fitz will be in there. He's third on the club with 16 goals. Jared Power is making his first appearance against the Stillheads all time. Power played at Mount Royal University this season. He's got one goal and five assists in 13 games for the Grizzlies. Keaton Jamison, who's Guy Carenza's pick for the opt-in first goal of the game. Jamison's got a point in six straight contests, 14 goals and 20 assists in 65 games. And the Rooster, Jordan Martell, will be in there. Martell's got a goal in four straight games. He also has a point in four straight. I'm pretty sure Christian Simeone was excited to see Mick Mester arrive in the locker room as Simeone was a teammate with Messner back in the 2019-2020 season, or actually it was the 2020-21 season. Uh, Messner's first of three at Merrimack turned out to be Simeone's senior year. And Kyle Pouncey will be acting as a forward tonight. Pouncey, normally a defenseman wearing number 23. He'll be a forward for Ryan Kanasiewicz this evening. Scratches for the Grizzlies among the forwards are Johnny Walker, Zach Sekos, Dakota Raby, and Cam Strong. All those guys out most likely for the rest of the season due to injuries. It's interesting to see Jordan Martel out there wearing number 27, same jersey number that Travis Barron wore. Barron was outstanding in the last month of the 2020-21 season. It looks like down the stretch, the Rooster has really picked it up for the Grizzlies as of late. He's sporting a sweet-looking 1980s-style mustache. And, Guy, I think if the Grizzlies want to have victories at some point in this series, whether it's tonight or Friday or even Saturday at Maverick Center, I get a feeling that Martell and Jamison are going to be in the middle of it, just like they were against Wichita. Oh, no, no doubt about it, Tyson. I really think that not only winning games against Idaho, but winning games in general just throughout the course of the season and into the playoffs, the Grizzlies find their way in. It's going to start with the, with Jamison and Martell. I think that duo, them heating up, is the key to the Grizzlies' success. Ty Pelton Bice is on a six-game point scoring streak for the Idaho Steelheads. We're led by Everett Sheen, who's done an outstanding job this season. The Stillheads are 53, 10, 1, and 2 this season. That's right. Idaho's been pretty good. They are challenging so many league records that it'd be impossible to get through all of them. Obviously, it's a three-game series. We'll get to most of them as the Stillheads have just been dominant this year. Idaho leads the league in goals per game, and they lead the league in fewest goals allowed per game. So the Stillheads, the best offensive team in the league and the best defensive team in the league. Dylan Wells makes his... Still had his debut in net. He played in one game in the NHL with the Chicago Blackhawks. So Dylan Wells, somebody that's got NHL experience. Uh, Wells played in 17 games this season with the Rockford Ice Hogs of the AHL, where he had a 9-6-1 record with a 2.96 goals against average and 9.05 save percentage. He also appeared in three games with the Texas Stars, and stats aren't very good there with an 8.39 save percentage, a 5.35 Goals against average, and so now he's a member of the Idaho Stillhead, 6'2 and 190 pounds. He's 25 years old. He's a former fifth-round pick in 2016 with the Edmonton Oilers. He's got previous experience in this league with the Wichita Thunder and Norfolk Admirals. In fact, the Grizzlies faced him when he was a member of the Wichita Thunder, and the Grizzlies had a good amount of success against Dylan Wells. So it should be interesting to see what he does in net. Starting defensive pairing for Idaho is Casey Johnson, who's got 11 points in 41 games. And he's paired up with Matt Register, who leads the league with a plus 30, uh, plus 53 rating. The league record is plus 59, and Register is hoping for a late season run to get the best plus minus in league history in a single season. Register has 51 points in 63 games. Starting forwards, the former Grizzly, A.J. White, who's the Stillheads captain, he'll be in there. He's got 47 points in 66 games. Wade Murphy's been outstanding as of late for the Stillheads. He's got 18 goals and 21 assists in 49 games. And Jordan Kawaguchi, who's got 26 goals and 26 assists in 54 games. Kawaguchi is a plus 25 for the Stillheads. And Idaho, if you look at the league rankings for plus minus, Idaho has the five best individuals in plus minus. So they've been outstanding five on five, and they've also been pretty good on the special teams. They've got a top five power play unit and a top five penalty kill unit. There really isn't a weakness to this roster. And, Guy, really the only way to beat the Stillheads is just play a north-south game, take it to them, and like the Grizzlies did in mid-January, just play with confidence and don't get really discouraged if Idaho makes a good play on you. You just got to have to keep going and see if you can just keep battling for 60 minutes. I agree, Tyson. Really, that's it. It seems like you got like a David and Goliath situation. You got the mighty Idaho Steelheads, 109 points, already clinched pretty much everything they can. They're just sitting here waiting for the playoffs, Tyson, but I really feel like 
they're not going to let these points go easily to the Grizzlies. It's the best rivalry in the ECHL. It's the Grizzlies and the Steelheads. Of course, they're going to go in there and want to beat up on the Grizzlies. So for the Grizzlies, I think you're right. They just got to play your game, try and find the weaknesses, the cracks in the Steelheads, because believe it or not, I'm sure there is a weakness to the Steelheads. And whether or not somebody finds out what that is before the end of the playoffs remains to be seen. But I mean, the Grizzlies know the Steelheads better than anybody else. They, they're going to see them a lot this season, 18 times in total. Uh, so there's there's a lot that the Grizzlies do know about the Steelheads. It's, it's about taking that knowledge that you already know and improving on it and exploiting that weakness. Tonight, I look in goal for the Steelheads. All season long, they've had fantastic goaltending with Kupski, Poirier, Shiel. Now you got a guy in Wells where you're not really sure what you're going to get if you're the Grizzlies, but also for the Steelheads, you're not entirely sure what you got. So for the Grizzlies, just do what you've been doing all season long and recently, ever since that February 11th game that you've talked about over the last couple of broadcasts, just take a bunch of shots and see if you can get one to sneak by. When we come back in 30 seconds, we'll have face off over at Idaho Central Arena. It's the Grizzlies and the Stillheads coming up next on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Expectations here will always remain high and we'll continue to find a way. Guys put together a lot of good games, you know. Great night for hockey as two big standings points are on the line tonight as Utah Grizzlies take on the Idaho Stillheads in the first of three straight meetings between the clubs. I'm Tyson Whiting with Guy Krenz. It's the 16th of 18 meetings between the teams this season. Utah's 4-11 against Idaho this year. Uh, we mentioned uh, it's a two-city, three-game series. Grizzlies are in Boise tonight and Friday night. And then the scene shifts to Maverick Center for Saturday night, and the Grizzlies will be home the final four games of the regular season. Trent Miner gets the start in net. He's got a 904 save percentage this season. He'll be wearing number 50. He's in the second year of a three year NHL entry level deal. He's a former seventh round pick back in 2019 of the Idaho Stillheads. Dylan Wells makes his Idaho Stillheads debut. He's wearing number one. As we mentioned, Wells played in one NHL game with the Colorado, uh, the Chicago Blackhawks earlier this season. He also spent some time in the AHL with Rockford. And the Texas Stars, Wells wearing number one. He's got good size at 6'2 and 190 pounds. His NHL debut was on November November 5th of 2022, a game that Chicago lost 4-0 against Winnipeg. Referee tonight is John Lindner. The linesmen are Jared Thomas and Scott DeBaugh. As there's Everett Sheen, the head coach of the Stillheads. Grizzlies will be skating from left to right. Draws one by the Stillheads and we're underway. Idaho in a black jersey with white numbers. Grizzlies in a white jersey with black numbers and professional green trim. As Idaho from the red, from the Utah blue line dumps it in. It's behind the net. Grizzlies chip it around the boards. It goes back to Casey Johnson. Left point. He'll take a lefty shot and it's blocked by the stick of Luke Martin, who's back in his second stint with the Grizzlies. He'll throw it out to Terran Pfizer. Glides off his stick. Puck still in play along the near side. Idaho skating from right to left as we see it on Flow Sports. As Wade Murphy has a glance off his stick, it goes in the stillhead zone. Grizzlies left point, rolled along the boards, and Utah makes our first line change of the game as Cameron Wright on the ice as Idaho has the puck. Stillheads, A.J. White with a rink-wide pass looking for Kawaguchi, and it doesn't connect. And icing is on the stillheads as we get our first whistle 42 seconds into the game. Everybody make your pick for the opt-in first goal of the game. I am going with Cameron Wright. Guy Karenza is taking Keaton Jamison. As Wright is out there with Mick Messner and jo Jordan Martell. Mick Messner was just signed by the Grizzlies a couple days ago. He's making his professional debut. He played in college at Wisconsin and Merrimack. As Wright will take the draw, he's got the rooster to his right. As Idaho wins the faceoff, they'll tap it off the near glass. It goes to center ice. Aaron Tho was outstanding against Wichita. Will throw a rink-wide pass to Messner. A glanced off Messner's stick. Goes into the stillhead zone where Idaho controls. Still heads over to the near side, gets to the right point. Wright keeps it in the offensive zone as he battles along the boards with Messner. Now goes back over to the rooster. Martell at the right side, trying to get it back to Wright. It's, it kicks towards the corner. Now Martell gets up top for Tho, but he couldn't keep the line. Pelton Bice throws it to the right side for Ryan Demowski. Demowski in the house of the corner. He gets it poked away by Kyle Mayhew, making his professional debut. 
as Grizzlies cross center ice. Cameron Wright dumps it in. The Grizzlies make a line change. A minute and a half into the contest, still no score. Idaho feeds it to the near side as Ty Pelton buys a point in six straight games. Crosses center ice to throw a right wing pass. Idaho gets it back towards Pelton Bice, but it's picked off. Keaton Jamison will cross center ice right wing and dump it in, as well as behind the net, rolls over to the left side. As Utah fans on a shot, Idaho crosses center ice. Domowski gains the offensive line and dumps it in. Connor McDonald, the Grizzlies captain, chases after it. He gets it, and he'll feed it across. As Utah nudges ahead towards center ice, Corey Thomas out there. He gets it to center ice, and the Grizzlies try to dump it in. Now it goes to the left point. Left point, shot saved by Wells as Idaho gets it. Still adds out to center ice. Two minutes in, they cross center ice and dump it in. As Idaho back around the net, Connor McDonald delivers a hit, but Idaho with the puck on the near side as they feed it back to the corner. Now centering pass, lefty shot, and it's blocked out in front by Luke Martin. As Grizzlies throw it to the left point, Idaho rolls it along the boards. It's cut off by Jack Becker, number 27. 11 goals, 21 assists. He feeds it out in front. Shot saved by Miner. Now on one knee is Justin Mesiak. 14 goals this season. Puck rolls to Miner. He covers up. Two and a half minutes in, still no score. And it looks like we got an interesting one here so far. I think it is going to be interesting, Tyson. I think that what it's going to come down to in this game is how well Trent Miner performs. We know how offensively proficient the Steelheads are. If Trent Miner is up to the task and gives the Grizzlies a chance to win this game, I think the Grizzlies can hang in there. Draws going to be in the near circle. We're just underway, so grab some chips and dip and a beverage of your choice. And enjoy a little bit of Wednesday with us. As draw one by the Grizzlies, as though gets it to Kyle Mayhew. Mayhew, Mayhew in his pro debut, glides it out to center ice. Utah chasing after it. Brandon Cutler gets there first as he collides along the glass. Looks like everybody stopped skating. As it looked like the Grizzlies are calling for icing. Cutler sporting a goatee. will skate back towards his own zone. They stopped playing. I don't know what the... They must have called Utah for icing, but I think the linesman said, my bad. Now the referee says, let's go to the Grizzlies zone. It looked like initially they were going to go to center ice. Ryan Kanaswich off the screen. I can't believe, uh, I can't imagine uh, he likes the call, but it looks like it's going to be icing on the Grizzlies. I don't think he liked that Cutler got hit there, but, you know, no icing touch up there. I think they thought about for a second, but they called icing on the Grizzlies. And if you're listening on YouTube, we apologize. We're on a remote broadcast. We'll try to describe it the best we can. As Idaho, right side looks to center. It kicks off a grizzly stick and goes to center ice. Matt Register, number 43, could be a future Hall of Famer in this league. He'll move it out to Casey Johnson. He throws it back towards the stillhead zone. Utah takes it away. Left circle, finds a righty shot. Saved by Wells. Now goes to Idaho, skates from right to left. Stillheads will chip it off the far glass. Goes to Mesiak, who dumps it in. Mesiak will skate towards the bench as the Grizzlies gather it. Kyle Mayhew's got great speed. He crosses center ice. Now he'll chip it to the corner. Mayhew chases after it. He gets around Casey Johnson. Mayhew gets the puck. He gets held up along the far corner by Johnson as Idaho will get it out to neutralize. They'll chip it off the far boards. Goes back to Utah. Corey Thomas kicks it across. It stays in play as Idaho Patrick Kudla gets to the corner as Kawaguchi back around the net for Jade Miller. Miller kicks it out in front. Shot by Zane Franklin goes wide as Idaho back in the near side as Kudla. Over in the left point, gets it. Kudla gets to Kawaguchi in the left circle. Kawaguchi gets around a skater. He's all alone on the right, left side. I right, trying to throw it out in front to Miller. Pass behind him. Right side, back to Kudla on the left. He'll get it across the right. Lefty shot, saved by Miner. That shot was taken by Jordan Kawaguchi, and Miner makes a save about four minutes in. Still no score as Idaho. Seems like the action's just kind of gone back and forth. And, uh, you know, does anybody have an edge so far? I think it's been back and forth so far, Tyson. I think the edge is starting to lean in the, in the Steelhead's direction. I look at a guy like Jordan Kawaguchi on that last shift, just dancing around the Grizzlies' defense. This is a guy that's dangerous, 52 points in 54 games. He's a threat on the ice. The Grizzlies need to make sure where he's at at all times. Utah's taken one shot. Idaho's taken three. No scores. 16-09 left in the first period. We're just getting underway. As Wright takes the draw, Idaho wins today. I think it's A.J. White taking it for the Steelheads. Grizzlies clear it out to center. It's taken by the rooster. Martell skates towards the right circle. He stops as Idaho gets there defensively. Martell gets around. Patrick Cudley gets back to the corner. Looking for the give and go. Puck stayed towards the stick of Messner. He'll take a lefty shot, and it goes wide as the net gets dislodged. As Cameron Wright was battling in front of the net with Owen Hedrick. Hedrick blames Wright, and so it looks like Wright, uh, Wright just ran into the net. And luckily, Dylan Wells got out of the way, or else he would have got hit by the crossbar. And uh, so Hedrick says, that's Wright's fault. You should get a penalty of some kind. It didn't look like Hedrick nudged right into the back of the net. It just kind of looked like Wright 
push the net, and luckily for the stillheads, Wells was able to get out of the way. Yeah, funnily enough, I think that actually was Cameron Wright's fault. He kind of just skates past the net, <laughs> puts a glove on it, and it kind of just tips over. Uh, well, it looks like he's going to stay out there. I mean, but that's why they call him the rat, right? He just gets away with stuff like that. He, he, like you he mentioned didn't know before, his own strength. He, yeah, he, he didn't know. It's just, I mean, but it's like you mentioned before in earlier broadcasts, it just seems like every time there's a scuffle, Cameron Wright's in the middle of it, but he never actually ends up fighting. And I mean, it's easy to see why they call him the rat. Right, who was a college teammate of Kyle Mayhew's last season at the University of Denver. Before that, Wright went to Bowling Green State, where he was a teammate of Connor McDonald's for two years. Wright takes a face off, and he wins it. Rooster with a backhand shot, saved by Wells. It gets kicked towards a far corner. Action deep in the stillhead zone as Patrick Cudlow moves ahead. Idaho ricocheted off the far boards, and it goes out to center ice. Stillheads will skate towards the left side. Justin Ducharme looked the center to bounce off of Shearer skate. Now the stillheads to the left side. Stop at the point. Hedrick feeds it back to the corner. Idaho gets it back up top for Hedrick. He will glide it to his right. Idaho with a right wing shot, and that one goes wide. There's a lot of traffic out in front of the net. As Grizzly skate towards the near side as Martell gets a pass. Luke Martin and on to Sure on the far side. Sure moves it out to center ice where it's picked off by Idaho. I think the linesman got a piece of it as Sure will get into Stillhead's territory. Idaho takes it away. They cross center ice. Idaho dumps it in. Miner behind his net gets it as it glided along the far wing boards. He'll nudge it to the near side. Grizzly skate from left to right. As Luke Martin moves it out to center ice, it goes back to Idaho. As the Stillheads will guide it back to the near side. Idaho at neutral ice as Comansis, the Arizona State product, out in the ice, number 21. First time he's played against the Grizzlies. He was a college teammate of Semic and Johnny Walker at Arizona State. Simeone on the ice as Idaho on the right side. Right point, lefty shots blocked. Grizzlies get it out towards center. As Tyler Penner dumps it in, he gets blasted along the near wing boards as it chips off the end wall deep in the stillhead zone. As Ty Pelton Bice will drop it off. Now across to Ryan Demowski, who gains center ice and dumps it in. Demowski's got 64 points in 66 games. The Grizzlies will guide it over to Jared Power. Power slides it across. Utah crosses center ice. The captain overskates it. Now it goes back to Ty Pelton Bice. He's defended by Power. Pelton Bice tried to center it, bounced off of Power, and goes to Kawaguchi. He gets up top, but Idaho couldn't connect on it. Grizzlies chase after it. Wells, well out of his crease, will clear it out to center. And it goes into the Grizzlies zone as chasing after it's Kyle Mayhew. And the arm is raised as icing is called on the stillheads as Dylan Wells skated well out towards the blue line to throw an outlet pass before Dylan Fitz was able to chase after it. That was a gutsy play by Wells. Comes way out into no man's land trying to play that puck. The Grizzlies were really hustling for it too. So uh, if that's any indicator as to what kind of style of game Wells plays, it might show that he's a little bit more aggressive. 14-01 left in the first. Still no score. Nobody's committed a penalty yet. Grizzlies win the draw. Kyle May, he looks like he's going to be fun to watch. He'll throw out the power on the right side. He'll take a lefty shot that goes wide. I think Idaho got a piece of it as over along the near boards, Idaho will chip it off the near glass, goes out to center ice. Idaho will band it about ankle high deep in the Grizzlies zone. Aaron Tho chases after it. Tho was outstanding against Wichita this year. He just has to imagine that Idaho is actually the Wichita Thunder, and he'll be just fine. So he'll guide it out to center ice. Grizzlies will tap it off the far boards, and it goes to Casey Johnson and still heads territorial, chip it ahead. It goes to center ice. Idaho chases after it. They get the puck, Kawaguchi, along the far boards. Gets it across as he was looking for Willie Neerham, number 29. Grizzlies cleared out to center as Hedrick will throw it back to center ice. Now back to Hedrick, who's in the, the stillhead zone. Hedrick moves out to new tries for Jack Becker, the former Arizona State product. He'll throw it back into the stillhead zone as Idaho playing a game of spread the ice and see if they can find a way to enter the attack zone with momentum. Idaho will chip it off the boards. Justin Andrew Charm gets taken away by Pfizer and moves out to Penner. Now to Cutler, high slot shot saved by Wells. Might have gone wide. As we're seven minutes in, still no score. As Idaho along the far side will chip it across. They're now in the, down the middle in their own zone. As Owen Hedrick controlling the action. Hedrick's a plus 35 this season. He'll cross center ice and feed a right wing pass. As Idaho, Justin Ducharme gets taken away. Luke Martin in the area gets hit along the, near, the end wall. As Grizzlies gather it, and they'll skate it out to center ice. Cameron Wright with speed. And make that Messner back to right, right to the near goal line. Tried to chip it out in front to Messner. And the shot goes wide. Actually, looks like Wells on his backside. And Martell's in the net as he got hit out in front. Dylan Wells in his stillhead's debut. Looks like he's shaken up just a little bit as Messner dropped it off for right, right in the left side. And then Martell got pushed into Wells by Zane Franklin. 
So no score. Grizzlies and the Stillheads looks like it's going to be a fun series. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. No score from Idaho Central Arenas. We're back to live action. 11.55 left in the first as Idaho enters the offensive zone. As they push towards the near corner, Justin Ducharm is a plus 13 this season, 13 goals. while moving out to the right side as Wade Murphy gets his pickpocketed as goes out towards center ice. Idaho regathers it. Still has to do a great job at puck possession as they'll throw it out towards Mesiak, who dumps it in. Chasing after it is... Corey Thomas, Thomas playing against his former team. He spent the latter part of last season with Idaho and was in training camp with them as battle along the far boards. Grizzlies wearing the white jerseys with black numbers and professional green trim. Idaho to the right circle. They'll skate towards the middle, but Corey Thomas takes it away, so he'll tap it off the near glass, and it ricochets out to center ice, and the center ice logo as Mesiak will throw it back into the stillhead zone as it goes towards the near side. Kamansis crosses center. Now I'll get to Wade Murphy. Murphy skates towards the left circle, feeds it out in front, but it rolls towards Minor, who covers up in the crease as we get a whistle with 11.02 left in the first. Kind of a strange flow to this one here in the first nine minutes. What have you seen? I just You mentioned that flow. I think it's quite strange, but I think that actually benefits the Grizzlies because you think about Idaho. They want to just hammer the puck in the Grizzlies' offensive zone. The Grizzlies aren't going to let them do that. So, so far, the Grizzlies are doing a good job of – uh, kind of just pushing back and not letting Idaho dictate the terms. So I really like the way the Grizzlies have come out to start this game. And you mentioned a guy like Corey Thomas. I think Corey Thomas is due for a big series against his former team. He was fantastic against Wichita, notching four assists in that series. So I think Corey Thomas is a guy to watch out for on the blue line. This broadcast is presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott, producing premier American copper and proudly celebrating 120 years of operations in the Utah community. 11.02 left in the first as Tyler Penner out there along with Brandon Cutler and Taryn Pfizer. Trent Miner takes his mask off as either they're taking a commercial break without letting us know or something is happening away from the ice. It just, I guess it is what it is, part of the troubles of doing these remote broadcasts. But, guys, it's interesting to see the newest Grizzlies as Mick Messner, Kyle Mayhew, and Luke Martin. Obviously, Martin, not a new guy to the Grizzlies as he was with them last year, but looks like Martin's off to a pretty good start, and I've been really impressed with what I've seen from Kyle Mayhew so far. Yeah, I mean, Luke Martin's new enough, right, in the eyes of Grizzlies fans this season, his first game back with the Grizzlies. I think he's looked solid so far, but I really like what Mayhew has done. I think he's been a good addition to this team from what I've seen. He's been active on every single shift, uh, so we'll see what, what comes, but I like the start. 11.02 left in the first. No score. Ty Pelton Bice will take the draw for Idaho against, I believe, Tyler Penner. Draw one by the, the Stillheads as Kamatsis hit Simeone up high. Kamatsis keeps the puck as he'll skate towards the right point. He'll chip it across to his right. Idaho skates towards the right circle. Now the far goal line. Idaho all alone. Lefty shot and it goes wide. Minor might have got, gotten a piece of it as it goes out towards center ice. Kamatsis. Demetrius is his first name. He'll throw it out to center ice, and the Stillheads dump it in. Grizzlies chase after it. James Shearer gets it. The University of Calgary product over to Luke Martin, the Michigan man. Now to Terran Pfizer. As Pfizer battles in the near corner, deep in the Grizzlies zone. He moves ahead, but Idaho pokes it back to the corner. Pfizer skates over there and gets it. He'll get it to Luke Martin. Martin with a rink-wide pass off the far boards. It goes to Utah. Brandon Cutler gets it back to Pfizer, but the pass is behind him. Idaho across the center ice as Kawaguchi gains the blue line. He'll chip it towards the middle for Bice. And he collides heavily with Cameron Wright. Wright gets back to his feet. Grizzlies come up with it. Utah crosses center. Now they step over the offensive line. Ah, they try to center it to Cutler out in front. It bounced off a stillhead. Now Pfizer will bounce it off the stillhead as it goes out to center ice. As Grizzlies will cross center. They'll skate 
into the stillhead zone. They veer it to the far corner and chase after it. Now Idaho gets it the nearest side as Idaho will chip it around Cameron Wright off the glass. It goes to center ice. Aaron throw at the Utah blue line, feeds a left wing pass. Grizzlies re-enter. Utah skates towards the left side as Kyle Mayhew drops it off. Though lefty shot, save, rebound, shot, and it goes wide. As Grizzlies had a chance out in front, that was Messner looking for his first pro goal. Left wing shot saved by Wells. Rebound out in front as Jack Becker battles. He'll get it back to the far side as Mayhew throws to the corner. Messner will bounce it off the body. Now it goes back to the left side. Martel with a righty shot. He scores. The Roosters scores from the left circle as Utah's taking a 1 0 lead. That's Martel's 15th of the year. And he now has a goal in five straight games. As Jordan Martell, once again, is the optimum first goal of the game score as Martell high fives everybody on the Grizzlies bench as the puck chipped over to the left circle. Martell is all alone, and he went top shelf over Dylan Wells, and he's been one of the constants for the Grizzlies as of late, and Jordan Martell does it again. That just started off as a great shift for the Grizzlies, Tyson, really pushing the narrative in the offensive zone. It just seemed like only a matter of time. Then you get the puck to a guy like Jordan Martell. What a shot. Just snipes it into the corner of the net, and the rooster remains hot. Martell with the goal. Mayhew and Messner with the assist. As Idaho wins the faceoff, crosses center ice and dumps it in. As Miner gets it to the far side, Grizzlies skate from left to right. As Idaho towards the right side, gets back checked by Power. As power battles, now goes to the right side. Idaho feeds across. Cudlow, left side. Lefty shot, and it's blocked out in front by McDonald. Now goes to Keaton Jamison, who will move it across past power, and it goes to center ice. Idaho regathers it. Cutler at neutral ice will get it across as Idaho will enter the offensive zone. As Mesiak skates towards the far corner, stops to be in shadow by Corey Thomas. Thomas battles. Now it goes towards McDonald. As Idaho around the net, I try to kick it out in front. Shot goes wide. Puck towards the near side. Cudla battles with Penner. Now goes to the left point as Mesiak gets around Pfizer. Pfizer takes it away. Foot race towards the Idaho blue line. Mesiak gets there first. It'll throw it to Hedrick as the net is empty on Idaho's side. Delayed penalty, and it's going to be on the Grizzlies. As Idaho towards the near side, 8-15 and counting left in the first. Utah leads 1-0. As the arm is raised by the referee as Idaho will carry it across center ice. Now the stillheads. Kawaguchi stops on the far side. He'll skate towards the goal line. Now Idaho chips it across. Left, left, deep, left wing shot goes wide. Penner might have gotten a piece of it. Utah touches up on the far side as Hedrick had a good look on a one-timer from the left side and missed on it. As looks like Utah is going to the Rodgers and Russell legal solutions holding cell for the first time tonight. As Utah leads 1-0 as the Rooster gets his 15th of the year. We come back in 30 seconds on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. So Utah commits a penalty, and they're in the Rodgers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Utah leads 1-0 as Jordan Martell, the rooster, gets his 15th of the year. Kyle Mayhew, and we believe uh, Mick Messner picking up his first professional point which is an assist although the ECHL app unfortunately as Vladislav Mikalchuk is number 25 Mikalchuk was released a couple days ago the penalty is on Corey Thomas two minutes for hooking he's in the Rogers and Russell legal solutions holding cell have you or someone you know been charged with a DUI Rogers and Russell is Utah's DUI defense firm consequences for driving under the influence in Utah are serious and you need great attorneys on your first line Look for a letter in the mail from Rogers and Russell inviting you to schedule a free consultation. Don't throw away or disregard this letter. Call and get Utah's number one DUI defense team. Rogers and Russell. Idaho's power play 23.6% this season. Battle along the far boards over the right point of the Grizzlies. Um, as Idaho gets it, still had skate towards the high slot as Kawaguchi will feed it to the near goal line. Now they glide it up top for Register. will skate towards his right. Register. Surveys now get to the left wing for Kawaguchi. He'll take a lefty shot and it goes wide. He tried to go stick side on Miner. As Idaho in the power play, 35 seconds in, over to the right side. Righty shot's blocked, and it carries out to center ice where Register gathers it. Grizzlies get a line change in as Idaho re-enters the offensive zone as Kawaguchi skates towards the right side, drops it off. Now right wing, they get it across to Register. 
Register over in this high slot as he'll survey now. Take a shot. Saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to the far circle. Now they glide it to Register. Who fakes a shot and gets to Kawaguchi. Kawaguchi to the left side. He'll take a lefty shot and it goes wide. It looks like redirects out a play off a of minor shoulder. As Kawaguchi with a good look from the left side. AJ wide out in front of the net. Still, it's doing a good job moving the puck around, but it looks like it's still a one nothing game. As Trent Miner's done a good job here early on. It's a tough power play unit for Idaho. And the thing is, Matt Register up top really redirects things and really, he really directs traffic out there. He's a dangerous power play unit, Tyson. And I think f- from what I've seen so far on this penalty kill, the Grizzlies have done a really good job of shutting it down and keeping things to the perimeter. Draws over in the near circle. Ty Pelton Bice will take it against Keaton Jamison as a draw won by Idaho. As Hedrick over to Cudlup, as he still has made a line change, they get to the near side. Justin Ducharm will get it back up top for Hedrick. Now feed it to the far circle. Now back up top for Hedrick. will glide it to his left for Cudlup. Cudlup will switch places and over to the left circle. As Ducharm over to Hedrick. Back to Ducharm. He's on the right side. Now up top for Hedrick. Hedrick will drop it off as Idaho gets to, to Domowski. Domowski over to Hedrick. Slot. Righty shot and it goes wide. And it looks like Trent Miner gloves it. And it looked like the shot was going to go wide, but Miner made a glove save. 624 left in the first. Utah still leads 1-0. As Hedrick had a good look, and Martel with a routine save as Ty Pelton Bice was net front, trying to impact the vision of Trent Miner. But it looks like the Grizzlies net miners got his A game so far tonight. 27 seconds left in the power play. 624 left in the first. Utah leads 1-0. Draw one by the Grizzlies, and it looks like the linesman says, my bad, we'll do it over again. Scott DeBont will drop the puck with Belt- Pelton Bice taking the draw against Taryn Pfizer. Pfizer, the former Victoria Royal, 5'11 and 176 pounds. As a draw one by the Grizzlies, Utah will clear it out as it goes past Patrick Kudla. Dylan Wells in his still heads debut, back behind his net as he'll get it to Kudla. Idaho has 11 shutouts this season by their goaltenders. As Cudla crosses center ice, it gets around Tho. He'll chip it across off the boards for Bice at the near goal line. He'll get it across to Cudla, who couldn't handle it. As Idaho gets it back to Cudla in the corner, now it goes to Bice. Up top for Hedrick, who fumbles the puck. Pfizer takes it away. Pfizer moves it ahead to Martel. Fresh out of the box, make that Thomas. Thomas with a shot, and it goes wide. As Thomas fresh out of the box, and he'll fire a right-wing shot, saved by Wells. As it's a Utah disaster cleanup, successful penalty kill. And Corey Thomas came out of the box at just the right time. Pfizer got him a pass out in front. And Thomas had to chase after it as it glanced off his stick. And he took a shot that Wells made the save on. Then Thomas had a second look from the right side. And Wells made that save as well. 547 left in the first. Idaho's outshot Utah 9-4. to We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. <laughs> with the nitro card at maverick you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon every day and you could save a whole lot more thanks to nitro best price pick up a nitro card and upgrade your adventure club account maverick's new bean to cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best day or night hot or ice enjoy a fresh cup today one nothing Grizzlies. Jordan Martell got his 15th of the year as Idaho skates into the offense's own right side. They get around Messner or make that uh, Mayhew, and the shot goes wide as Idaho glides it across. As Cody Haskinen skates towards the right circle, take a shot, he scores. Cody Haskinen was all alone in the right circle, and he fired a righty shot. They got past Trent Miner, and with 528 left in the first, we're tied at one. Aiskinen's a plus 47 this season, which is second in the league as he high fives everybody on the Stillheads bench. One fish is being thrown on the ice. Looks like one of those fish that looks like uh, drew some blood on the ice. As he put a spotlight on it, guy holds the fish up. He's got a weird looking fish hat and he 
holds it up in the air in celebration as Cody Hayeskin was on the right side. And he was just all alone, skated towards the right dot and fired up up high on Trent Minor. Just like that, we're tied at one. That was one of those shots, Tyson, where you blink and you were going to miss it. That was an absolute snapper of a shot from Hayeskin in. A uh, tough shot to stop already for Miner. He might have been screened by his own defenseman. Nonetheless, it's in the back of the net. It's a 1-1 game. Draws going to at center ice. As it's good to see the two new guys getting assists on that Martel goal and Kyle Mayhew and Mick Messner each getting assists on the Mayhew goal on the uh, Martel goal. But Cody Hayes going to tied it up. 528 left in the first period. Draws at center ice right against Jade Miller, the draws won by the Grizzlies who cross center ice and drive it in. Utah skating from left to right here in the first period. Idaho from right to left. Right wing shot is blocked by Martell, and that was taken by the Grizzlies as Idaho lifts it in the air. It's gloved by Corey Thomas at the Idaho blue line. Now Idaho gets it. They skate towards the right circle. Nice move on McDonald. Backhand shot and saved by Miner. That was taken by Zane Franklin. He wants a penalty as he thought Thomas held him up. Uh, Cameron Wright will lift it in the air, bounces at center ice in the right wing, and glides towards the stillhead zone. Cody Hayskin gets it. He'll tap it off the near glass. goes to center ice. Zane Franklin crosses center, and he dumps it in. Franklin could be an agitator at times. Idaho's outshot Utah 11-4. to Has action deep in the Grizzlies zone as Utah has it behind the net. As the Grizz, Connor McDonald over to the near side for Tyler Penner. He'll chip it across. It's picked off at center ice by Willie Neerham who crosses center. Penner takes it away from him as he's near Utah's blue line. And he'll get to Terran Pfizer back in the Grizzly zone. He'll chip it ahead. It bounced off of Neerham and goes to Utah, who chips to the left side. And now to center ice, Kalaguchi gets it, and he'll throw it back into the stillhead zone as Idaho will move it ahead. And the pass doesn't connect, and the linesman holds his Right arm in the air, and icing is called on Idaho with 418 left in the first. Pretty interesting back and forth here, but Idaho, they don't have the record they do by accident. They're a team that really does a good job controlling the action and controlling the pace of the game. Yeah, Tyson, you mentioned just Idaho controlling the game. I think their strategy is to just suffocate the opponent by spending most of the time in the def- in their offensive zone. So the Grizzlies, you got to find a way to get out of your own zone, dictate the terms in the neutral zone, and go the other way. Draw on the stillhead zone near side. Gets kicked towards the corner. Dylan Fitz battles. Cutler over there. So is Tyler Penner. Cutler gets it out of the pile. He'll throw it to Martin. Right lefty shot. Righty shot. And a save by Wells. As Martin took the shot from the left circle. And Wells made the save on it. Luke Martin had 10 goals for the Grizzlies last season. And two more in the playoffs. And he had eight goals for Jacksonville in 25 games. As Martin sporting a mustache. Got a pass from Cutler. Over to Martin, it was a one-timer saved by Wells, and then Martin got it back, and the second shot was also saved by Dylan Wells. We apologize as we're just at the mercy of what we see on this one video feed, and unfortunately at times identifying players can be difficult, but we're just trying to do the best we can with what we have and have a little bit of fun along the way. Draws in the far circle, one by the Grizzlies. Fires over the shot that goes wide. Idaho skates towards the near side, and Demowski clears it out to center. A still head goes down. And it looks like no penalty on the play. It looked like Sure might have tripped up Wade Murphy. Now Sure gets it about 20 feet in front of Trent Miner. He'll throw it to the near side for Martin. Luke Martin crosses center ice. He'll get it to Cutler. Cutler to the right side. Steps over the line. Stops along the near boards. Eye feeds it out in front as the puck goes airborne. Sure on the left side. Gets around the net. Sure will glide it up top as skating into the picture. Simeone. He'll dump it around as Tyler Penner behind the net. Battles of Register. Register holds him up. Register gets a puck and he'll t- t- toss it towards A.J. White. Grizzlies at center ice get it. As Utah back in their own zone, I think that's Kyle Mayhew, number six, who picked up an assist on the Martel goal earlier in the first period. As Idaho picks it off, they cross center ice and dump it in. As Luke Martin behind his net will stop. But he's going to play big minutes turnover. Idaho feeds it across, and it's picked off by Utah. As a centering pass out in front didn't connect. Utah lifts it high into the air. Register bats it in the air. And drops it. It's a hand pass by Idaho. 301's left in the first period. We're tied at one. Draws going to be at neutralized as Dylan Fitz wearing the A on his sweater. Back out there. He had an outstanding month of February, in particular that road trip that really got the Grizzlies jump started out East Coast, where he had a Gory Howe hat trick against Savannah. And he also played great against his former team, the Orlando Solar Bears. And ever since then, it seems like Fitz has been on a roll. He had an outstanding series, scoring six points against Wichita last week. Grizzlies win the draw. They dump it in, chasing after it's Patrick Kubla. He gets it and skates around Dylan Wells' net. Idaho in the black jerseys tonight as Justin Ducharme gets around Simeone across the center ice. Now he skates towards the right circle. Ducharme around the net, still has a puck, and he'll chip it across to Kubla. He skates towards the near goal line. Kubla now around the net being shadowed by Fitz. 
as Kudla to the right side, glides it up top for Hedrick. Now to Ducharme, centers the bice lefty one-timer, and it goes wide. As Idaho to the right side will skate towards their left. As they drop it off for Bice. High slot, lefty shot, and it's blocked out in front of Miner. Puck kicks towards the far corner. Pelton Bice gets pushed by Simeone as Idaho gets it back up top for Kudla. Now it's the left side for Hedrick, one-timer, and he misses everything, and it goes out of play off the protective netting. Two twelves left in the first. We're still tied at one. The guy, the Grizzlies, need to have some more action in the offensive zone as Idaho really doing a good job at neutralize, not letting the Grizzlies really advance into the offensive zone. I agree, Tyson. I think the Grizzlies have spent way too much time in their own zone, and when they have found a way to emerge from their own zone, Idaho's dictated the play through the neutral zone. I think these next few shifts to end the period are critical for the Grizzlies. Can they build any momentum heading into intermission? We'll see who gets some momentum going to the locker room during the first intermission. We'll go over some scores from around the league and how it impacts the playoff picture. Draws in the near side as it's won by Jade Miller. Ido gets it up top for Haskin, who's already got a goal tonight. He'll skate to the right side. I chips out front to Franklin. Shoots, he scores. Haskin had fed it out in front to Zane Franklin, who put it away. Franklin's going to get his 18th of the year if he got a piece of it. As Franklin's going to skate to the bench first, sporting a beard and long hair, wearing number 37. As he high fives everybody on the Stillheads bench. 203 is left in the first, and Idaho's taking a 2 1 lead. Ace Gennardi with a multiple point game as a bounced off the Cameron Wright stick onto Franklin out in front. Kind of a weird redirection as it was really impossible for Trent Miner. Then it glided towards him, and then Franklin it looked like in front of the crease just slid it, slid it between the legs of Trent Miner as Franklin looked like he went five hole out in front. And just like that, it's 2 1 stillheads. Draws it center ice, and it's won by the AE stillheads. As Utah scored first tonight, two unanswered by Idaho. As they move it out to neutralize, they get around Penner, drags down a steelhead. No calls. The Grizzlies back in their own end, skating from left to right. Across to Luke Martin. Martin, the Michigan man, gets to neutralize. Now he crosses center and moves Ed to Pfizer. Pfizer skates towards the right circle, chips out front to Martin. Martin backhand shot, saved by Wells. Rebound goes to Utah. As Pfizer over to Martin. Martin back to the left point, stops. He'll glide it towards the left circle. Grizzlies backhand chip it across toward the... Crease uh, the uh, slot towards the near boards. Now goes to Shearer, who centers it, picked off by Idaho. A still head goes down at center ice. Idaho gets a breakaway. Lefty shot goes wide. Boy, it was that close to making it 3-1. As Willie Nearham will kick it off the skate of Brandon Cutler, and it glides to Martin. Uh, as Luke Martin, no relation to Bryson Martin, who's also on the Grizzlies. Bryson's a scratch tonight. This goes to the near side as Pfizer. Oh, he just about got elbowed in the head, but cleared it out to center as Idaho reenters the zone. Right side. Idaho, righty shot, and a kick saved by Miner, and the puck flies out of play. 58 seconds left in the first, but Idaho leads 2-1, to one, and by that second goal was just kind of one of those fluky plays out in front, and Zane Franklin was able to put it away. Yeah, it was one of those strange-looking goals, but I think the biggest question is, is why is Zane Franklin sitting at the top of the blue paint? The Grizzlies uh, should not let him be there. I, the Grizzlies need to find a better way to box out the top of the crease. Franklin had no business being there. Looks like they've given the goal to Haskin, and they say Franklin didn't get a piece of it, even though Franklin acted as if he had scored. That would be Haskin in second goal of the game. Franklin and Miller with the assist. Utah wins the draw. They cross center ice as the Rooster gains the line, throws it towards Messner as he battles along the end boards as Cameron right over in the far corner, chips it up top for Mayhew. He'll take a lefty shot, and it goes wide. Wells might have gotten a piece of it as Idaho clears it out. As Aaron Tho chases after it, Though moves it ahead as it goes to neutralize and it goes to the stillheads as Casey Johnson at the Idaho blue line moves it ahead. It looked like it bounced off a stillhead stick, goes deep in the Grizzly zone as Mayhew's got great speed, skates around Utah's net, and I'll move it ahead as Grizzlies cross center, left wing, and they'll chip it towards Dylan Wells, who gathers it on two hops to the ice, and he will hold on to it with 17 seconds left as the rooster is chasing after it. Uh, but it looks like despite being down two to one, the rooster Jordan Martell looks like he's been outstanding. And if you're talking about blue collar hockey players who can really make an impact, uh, I've really been impressed with Mick Messner in his first period in a Grizzlies uniform. Looks like he's a guy that will battle along the boards. Not a very big guy at 5'11", 193 pounds, but it does look like he's a pretty good energy effort type of player. Penner's taking the draw from the far side. He's got Pfizer and Cutler out there as a draw one by the Grizzlies. Sure, with a slot blast, and it goes wide. As it bounced off the end boards, as Sure was in the high slot after winning the face off and just fired away. Now Sure on the right side fires towards the net. It goes wide. Penner tries to chip it out in front. Ido cuts in front of Pfizer 
as they will skate towards the near wing boards and run out the clock. Good job by Justin Meziak cutting in front of Taryn Pfizer. And that will do it for 20 minutes over at Idaho Central Arena as the Grizzlies got the first goal of the game as Jordan Martell scored 10-43 in with Kyle Mayhew and Mick Messner getting the assist. Then Idaho tied it up 14-32 in as Haskinen got his fourth of the year. Um, Kumansis and Jade Miller with the assist, and then 17-57 in. Right now, the ECHL box score has Haskinen scoring. They say that Zane Franklin did not get a piece of it out in front. So Haskinen would get his second of the game, Franklin, and Jade Miller with the assist. Miller has two assists for the Stillheads through, through one period. Uh, Messner and Martell are each a plus one here through 20 minutes as Idaho outshot Utah. Uh, let's see what the updated stats are. It was 14-6 to six with one minute left in the period, and it looks like 14-6 to six is how it ends after 20 minutes of play. When we come back, Guy Krenz will recap the first 20 minutes of play, and we'll also talk about the Mountain Division standings and how big this series is for the Grizzlies and where the Grizzlies stand in the Mountain Division standings. There was one game in, involving Mountain Division teams that played that uh, happened earlier today, and the Allen Americans are also in action against the Savannah Ghost Pirates. We'll talk about that game as well. As first intermission over Idaho Central Arena, it's the Stillheads 2 and the Grizzlies 1. We're back in two minutes for the six, the Rio Tinto Kennecott Intermission Report on the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. It's the Steelheads 2 and the Grizzlies 1 after 20 minutes of play. I'm Guy Carenza alongside Tyson Whiting. It was a fun first 20 minutes over at Idaho Central Arena. The Grizzlies open up the scoring 10:43 into the first period. It was the Rooster, Jordan Martell, getting his 15th goal of the season, assisted by uh, Kyle Mayhew and Mick Mesner. Although they still got him listed as Vladislav Mikalchuk on the ECHL box app, uh, but don't don't be confused. It is Mick Mesner. So Mesner picks up his first pro point, and Mayhew picks up his first point as a Grizzly. And so the Grizzlies made it one nothing, but 14:32 into the first period. Cody Haskinen would get the Steelheads on the board with his fourth goal of the season. That was assisted by Kumansis and Miller. So that made it a 1-1 hockey game. Then late in the period, 17-57 into the first. It was Haskinen again, although we have reason to believe that Zane Franklin got a stick on it out in front. Uh, we'll have to see uh, if that gets changed later on. For now, it is Cody Haskinen getting his second goal of the game, his fifth goal of the season. And Franklin and Miller pick up the assist on that goal. So it's 2-1 Steelheads after 20 minutes of play. Shots are 14-17 to in favor of Idaho. The only penalty was to Corey Thomas 
in the first period. Idaho was not able to score on that power play chance. So Utah has not had any power play chances. Idaho is 0 for 1. On the Grizzlies side of things, uh, the only Grizzly that has taken multiple shots in this game is Luke Martin in his first game back with the Grizzlies this season. He's got two shots in this game. For the Steelheads, the leader in shots for them, we've got four skaters with two shots apiece. Kawaguchi, Haskinen, Mesiak, and Hedrick all have two shots for the Steelheads. Trent Miner is in net tonight for the Grizzlies. He stopped 12 of 14. Dylan Wells for the Steelheads has stopped 6 of 7. For the Grizzlies, it was a back-and-forth period to start, but then the Steelheads started to break away. Tyson, I mean, it's, it's just what the Steelheads do. They're a really well-rounded team, but really it seems like what they like to do is just suffocate their opponent in the attacking zone and then stifle anything that goes to the neutral zone. And as a result of that, they're just able to pound you. And just as the puck just trickles back into their own zone, the other team goes off for a change, and the Steelheads just regroup and go right back on the attack. And it's what makes them such a dominant team. The Grizzlies, for the first 10 minutes or so, did a good job of really pushing back against the Steelheads. What do they got to do here in the second period to just once again push back and get the next one? I mean, Idaho has that patient urgency. You know, it's like they combine patience with a little bit of, sen- of a sense of urgency and in getting into the attack zone. And really for the Grizzlies, it wasn't just the Martell goal, but it was really the few minutes leading up to the Martell goal where the Grizzlies were able to establish some offensive zone time. I think you have to like what happened the last 20 seconds of that first period. You know, Utah was able to get a shot there from Shearer and, I think that Pfizer and Cutler, you know, if they can break free, they can end up doing something. But I think it's just a matter of finding a way to get some offensive zone time. I do think even though the Grizzlies power play has struggled as of late after losing Andrew Nilsson, I do think once the Grizzlies do good on the power play, if they ever do tonight, you know, they didn't have a single power play in the first period. But I do think Luke Martin can make a difference. Uh, he was a pretty good power play performer last season for the Grizzlies, you know, oftentimes setting up Das too. But he's proven – not only with the Grizzlies, but with Jacksonville. We saw it against the Grizzlies in December when he was playing for Jacksonville that he can be a finisher on the power play as well. He had two goals against the Grizzlies, and if I remember right, at least one of them was on the power play. So I think that I'd be curious to see what the Grizzlies' power play looks like if they ever get it. I think that would help open up some offense's zone time. But this is really what the Steelheads do, and that's why they got the record that they do. You know, They control the shot count, uh, out, out shooting opponents by 7.5 per game this season. And obviously the first period, you know, they were able to get it and they show a replay of that Franklin goal. And it looked like there'd be no way that Franklin didn't score because just the momentum of it. He, he hacked away at minor. And if he doesn't get the goal, that's a very, very lucky goal by Haskin and who would get a second of the game. Yeah, I still don't know how Franklin didn't get uh, credit for that goal. I think that will get changed later on. But I am interested to see what the Grizzlies power play looks like. That's a unit that has been struggling as of late. I think if you add Luke Martin to that, I think that could be a lethal unit. But Steelheads are a pretty disciplined team. and I think we may or may not see the Grizzlies go to the power play, so the Grizzlies will have to make the most of their chances five on five. But the big storyline coming to this game was the new guys. I mean, yeah. Luke Martin, not necessarily a new guy, but the new guys, uh, Mesner and Mayhew for the Grizzlies, both of them factored in on the McCall- – uh, they got McCallchuk <laughs> on the box score. Uh, they – in an unrelated roster move, McCulchuk was uh, released from the team and just so happens that Mesner has number 25, the old number that McCulchuk wore. So I see the 25 and I see McCulchuk on the box score. And of course, I think it's Vladdy, but no, it is Mick Mesner picking up his first pro point here tonight. And Mayhew also picks up a point on that goal. New guys factoring on the goal. It's good to see. I think for Kyle Mayhew, sometimes it's tough to see what happens away from the puck on this remote feed, but um, looked like Mayhew's got pretty good speed. You know, he seems to be the kind of guy that can play fast and yet play under control at the same time. And so it looks like he's going to be a good addition to the Grizzlies. And it really looked like, from what I saw from Mick Messner, it looks like he's a blue-collar performer. Uh, somebody who can win battles along the boards. You know, he's 5'11", 193 pounds, played a good program at Mary Mack the last three years. And before that, spent two years at the University of Wisconsin. And I think Coach is really optimistic as to what he's going to bring to the table. And he's on a pretty good line tonight starting out with Cameron Wright and Jordan Martell. So they, they threw Messner right into the fire, and I thought he handled himself pretty well in the first period. I think he did, Tyson. And I think you talk about Kyle Mayhew. This is a guy that was a plus 20 in his last year with the University of Denver in 40 games. So I mean, you don't get a plus 20 for doing nothing. So I think Kyle Mayhew, uh, while he seems to have a lot of speed, potentially could jump in on offensive rush. Seems like he's a very sound defensive defenseman and should uh, pair nicely uh, on a Grizzlies blue line. 
And as for Mesner, I, you're right. He really just got thrown into the fire. And he's looked solid so far in the first 20 minutes. I saw him taking shots, and I, always, I thought that was really good to see him taking shots in his first game as a Grizzly. I think you want to get that out of the way. I think you want to get that first pro point out of the way, which he did quickly, and that was good. But you want to see those young guys taking shots. You don't want to see them be uh, shy to take shots. And it seems like Messner isn't. I like what he's done so far. I think he's going to be a good addition to this Grizzlies team. Obviously, the Steelheads are an outstanding team, but it's been a while since the Grizzlies have, pay, have played them. And I really think, uh, really think that since the Grizzlies have played them, uh, you know, the last meeting was on Martin Luther King Day, January 16th, where Utah won 4-1. to one. You know, The Grizzlies are a different team. When we talked about something changing on February 11th, you know, Utah had gotten blown out four straight games, and then it sounded like they had a very, very spirited morning skate where guys just battled big time. And that ended up changing things. That, since February 11th, the Grizzlies are averaging 4.22 goals per game, and they've also really improved on the shot count. You know, prior to February 11th, the Grizzlies were averaging uh, 28.43 shots per game, which is near the bottom. Now the Grizzlies, over the last 22 games, averaging 39.09 shots per game, and they're currently 12th in the league in shots per contest. And so they've proven over the last couple months that they're going to you know, take a ton of shots. They only had seven in the first period. And I'm really curious to see uh, what sort of adjustments we see from Ryan Kanasiewicz in his unit as to how the Grizzlies can enter the attack zone with momentum so they can find a way to, you know, take double-digit you know shots and get those good scoring chances here in the last two periods because they're certainly going to need it if they want to beat the Stillheads team. Well, and just to add on to that, I think that the Grizzlies, when they have had sustained offensive pressure, I think they've looked great. I mean, you think about that Martell goal. The Grizzlies were really buzzing in the offensive zone. I thought that was a really good shift, and then they ended up getting a goal out of it. But, I mean, we talked about it at the top of the uh, the intermission. The Steelers do a great job of suffocating their opponent through the neutral zone and just not letting them really go on the attack. And that's why the Steelers are so good, not only offensively, but defensively as well. I mean, you think about 2.1 goals against average for Idaho. And there's a reason that they have that. So for the Grizzlies, they need to find a way to really gain the edge on that transition game. Uh, we saw them do really well against Rapid City when they were on the transition game. They can bring that element to their game right here against Idaho. Uh, I think there's reason to believe that the Grizzlies can find a way to climb back in here. It's a big game in the Mountain Division standings. And when we come back, we'll recap what's going on around the league. And we'll also talk about the playoff picture and where the Grizzlies currently fit into the Mountain Division race where the top four teams in each division make the playoffs. First intermission over Idaho Central Arena, and the Stillheads lead the Grizzlies 2-1 to one on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. 
First intermission over at Idaho Central Arena. Still heads lead 2-1. to one. I'm Tyson Whiting hanging out with Guy Krenza. You're in the lobby at Maverick Center, and the weather is just not good outside. It's, it still feels like hockey weather as we're coming down to the final couple weeks of the regular season. Earlier today, Wichita defeated Tulsa 3-1 to one in front of a crowd of 4,640, most of them probably screaming kids, about fifth or sixth grade. As Wichita got goals from Jay Dickman, Mikkel Stanell, and Peter Don't Call Me Patrick Bates as the Thunder picked up a new goalie. They released Justin Kappelmaster, and they signed former Grizzly Trevor Gorsuch, who played for the Grizzlies for about a two-month stretch in the 2020-21 season. Gorsuch stopped 36 of 37 as the Thunder pick up a 3-1 victory. One other game involving Mountain Division teams looks like Allen has just scored to take a 5-4 lead as Hank Crone gets his league leading 43rd of the season. Colton Hargrove and the goaltender Luke Parasini with the assist there, 10-30 into the third, as Allen has scored three unanswered after Savannah took a 4-2 lead as Jack Combs has found the back of the net for Allen. A lot of the usual suspects, but Colby McCauley, the former Idaho Stillhead, has two goals for Allen. They now lead 5-4, to four, and guys, thumbs down is because the Grizzlies are rooting against the Americans and all Mountain Division teams. As right now, as we sit, Idaho's obviously clinched the division with 100, 109 standings points. Second place is a three-way tie. Allen, Kansas City, and Wichita with 68 standings points are tied for second. And the Grizzlies right now are in fifth. But you think about how tight this race is. The Grizzlies at the playoff start today would be out. But if the Grizzlies win and Allen loses in regulation, the Grizzlies would be in second place all by themselves in the division. So when we talk about how this thing's going to come down to the final couple days of the season, it's just that. It's that tie of a race. And Rapid City is trying to climb back into the race. As Rapid City yesterday defeated Kansas City 3-2. to two. Rapid City later this week will be on the road to take on the Wichita Thunder in a two-game series. And so Rapid City with 65 standings points. They get off to a fantastic final five games. They go 4-1 and one or 5-0 and oh in the last five games. It's possible the Rush could find themselves in position for a playoff spot. But that's what makes it crazy is this thing is fluid from night to night. Here are the playoff picture. And, guy, a Savannah victory in a Utah, you know, a Savannah, you know, an Allen loss and a Utah win. Utah's in second place all by themselves. But if the playoffs started today, Grizzlies would be on the outside looking in. So Utah could be as high as number two in the playoff race, or they could miss it all together if they don't play well the final six games. It's really a crazy final two weeks of the season. It's just absolutely bonkers, isn't it, Tyson? I mean, just to think, the team sitting outside looking in, if they win and another team loses, boom, they're in second place. Um, but, I mean, for the Grizzlies, the schedule does favor them coming up. I mean, yeah, we've got the Steelheads for a three-game set here. Uh, but then you got the Tulsa Oilers, and you look at some of the other teams around the division. Uh, it's not so it's not so easy. I think about Kansas City, who's got Cincinnati at the end of the year. Uh, we know how good Cincinnati is. We got a good taste of them here at Maverick Center a couple weeks ago. So, I mean, it really, I wouldn't put any money on any team. I mean, it's just so crazy. It just changes night in, night out. I wouldn't bet on it. It just fluctuates like crazy. But, I mean, for the Grizzlies, there's a lot of optimism here, but you got to keep winning games. And so for the Grizzlies, you got to take it one game at a time, and everything else will just fall into place. Second period action will begin shortly over at Idaho Central Arena. Guy, what do the Grizzlies need to do here in the middle frame to take control of this game? I think they just need to come out and establish a four check. I think through the first five or ten minutes in the first period, the Grizzlies did a good job of pushing back and forth. It was a back and forth game, but the Grizzlies didn't really hold on to it. And around the ten minute mark, Idaho broke ahead. So establish a four check and play your own style of game. Puck has been dropped for the second period. Utah gets in after Idaho initially wins the faceoff. Grizzlies right circle at the center out in front. As Utah skating from right to left in the second period, pass goes wide over to the near corner as it's taken by Wade Murphy. We'll move it ahead. It lifts high into the air. It's gloved by the Grizzlies. A new try. So Luke Martin in his second stint with the Grizzlies. He'll get around an Idaho skater as Martin will fling it to his right. Grizzlies enter the attack zone as Pfizer will dump it in from near the blue line as Idaho chases after it behind uh, Dylan Wells' net as the puck goes across to Matt Register. They'll lift it high into the air. It's taken at center ice by Shearer. Moves to his left or right. I try to get it across to Messner, and it's wide of the mark as Messmer couldn't reach it. As Idaho spins it back from one corner to the other deep in their own zone. 
Now the studs will start the attack from left to right. Good back check by Cameron Wright as it goes back to right to the left side. He'll skate towards the circle. Take a righty shot. Saved by Wells. Rebound goes out to the near side as Idaho battles along the near boards. Wright gets it back. Right left wing shot saved by Wells. And the Idaho net minder holds on and is still heads debut as Cameron Wright with two good looks in the first minute, four seconds of the second period. Right with a good back check before that. And Messner out in front looking for the rebound, but Dylan Wells was able to hold on. Wells has more experience in the AHL this year, playing 17 games with Rockford and three games with the Texas Stars. He struggled with Texas a little bit, and now he's with the Idaho Steelheads as they've had some outstanding goaltending all year. In fact, the Stillheads team save percentage this season is 928. Idaho wins the draw. They skate from left to right as he's going in. And now they make that Owen Hedrick will skate towards the right circle. Uh, they center it out in front. Bice with a lefty shot goes wide. As the puck along the far boards at center ice, Idaho chips it back in. As Grizzlies gather it at their goal line as they skate around. Trent Miner's net is all tossed off the near boards. It's taken away by Hedrick, who waits at the blue line. Now he enters as he'll drop it off for Ducharm. Back to the corner for Hedrick. Hedrick gets pushed by Messner. Now it goes back to Utah. The Grizzlies will chip it ahead. The Grizz cross center. Utah skates towards the right side. Centers the power. Power skate in. Lefty shot. Saved by Wells. Rebound goes to Wichita. They skate along the near side. As Idaho out across to Domowski. Now to Hedrick who dumps it in as it bounced off the steelhead at the Utah blue line and glides deep in the Grizzly zone as Utah gets it. Mayhew feeds to the near side as Utah crosses center. Jamison will dump it in from the left wing as it glides along the boards. Fitz chases after it, but getting there first is Kamatsis for the Arizona State product. He'll move it ahead. Ido steps over the blue line as they battle along the far boards. Grizzlies hold them up. Skating back over there is Zane Franklin, who might have scored late in the first period. Right now it's listed as Haskinen. Grizzlies will toss it to center ice, and it goes into the stillhead zone as Idaho chases after as they get there in front of Dylan Fitz. As the still heads around the net with good speed, they cross center ice. Kuzmetsis, the Arizona State product, gets around to check. He chips out to the right side for Miller. Lefty shot saved by Miner. Rebound goes to Utah as Fitz. Along the near side, will backhand it out to the right. Grizzlies step over the blue line. Now they fire a shot that goes wide. Fitz chases after it. As Penner kicks it towards the end boards, it hits off the boards on one hop. As the Stillheads get out to Zane Franklin, who's battling with Penner. Now Martin falls into Franklin. Grizzlies across to Shearer. Shearer left wing. I uh, trying to chip it out front to Pfizer. Pfizer gets it. He'll glide towards the right circle. Pfizer around the net. Now a good poke check by Cody Haskin. And as he battles behind the net with Pfizer. Now another stillhead skates over there. Grizzlies hit the side of the net. Cutler over there battling along with a couple stillheads. Haskin comes out of the pile with the puck. As Haskin gets pushed by Pfizer. As Haskin skates around Idaho's net. Pfizer takes it away. I try to chip it out in front, and Wells cuts it off to the side of his net and holds on to it. The goal line, 16-35 left in the second, still 2-1, still heads, and a game that's been pretty difficult to describe. But what have you seen here early in the second? What I've seen, Tyson, is the Grizzlies have been in the steelhead zone. I like that the Grizzlies have really come out here with a sense of energy, a sense of purpose, and now they find themselves in the steelhead zone. And really, they've been dictating the terms so far throughout the second period. They got to start winning faceoffs here, and it starts with a critical draw, draw here. Draws give me the near side as Cameron Wright will take it. He's got Messner to his left and Martel to his right. Idaho wins the faceoff as they'll throw it out to center ice. Martel gets along the far boards and he'll chip it across as Idaho gathers it in their own zone. As register over to Johnson, Casey Johnson's got 11 points this season. He'll chip it across to Niram. Niram steps over the Utah blue line and dumps it towards the end wall. As delivering a hits, Jack Becker as the puck glides in front of the net. Naram backhand shot, saved by Miner. And Trent holds on, 16-10 left in the second. As Draw's going to be in the Grizzlies zone. They've got a lot of talented forwards, Idaho does. Jack Becker, Willie Naram, 6'4", and 215 pounds is Becker. And Naram goes 6'4", 225. Naram's a plus 23 this season. If you're talking about Idaho, that's their physical bunch to go along with speed guys like Kawaguchi and Ryan Domowski and and uh, Justin Misiak and A.J. White bringing that veteran presence. They've just combined a lot of different qualities into that Stillheads lineup as Idaho wins the draw. As they skate around Utah's net, as Idaho now to the near side, they'll glide it up top for Register. We'll fire it towards the left corner. Kawaguchi chases after it. Cutler nudges it towards the corner as the Grizzlies get it, and Utah skating from right to left. will move it ahead. They cross center ice. So they'll dump it off the boards. Messner gets around a skater. Now Messner gets dragged down by Register, 
Luckily, Messner is able to get back to his feet, but Ido gets the puck. Cameron Wright battles along the boards with Johnson. Now taking it's Martel. Martel skates along the goal line, tried to chip it over to Messner out in front of the net, and it's picked up by Niram, who crosses center ice. Niram skates towards the left circles. He's being hanged on to by Thomas. He'll throw it to the far dot, and it's taken by Utah. Grizzlies, Jamison crosses center ice, moves ahead, bounced off a steelhead skate. Idaho crosses center ice and dumps it in. McDonald towards Jamison, the far side. We're about five minutes into the second period. Steelheads lead two to one. Out to center, Jared Power kicks it in. Power chases after it, and he's displaying good speed as he's behind the net, battling with Owen Hedrick. Power goes down, fits battling on the, along with A.J. White. Puck glides towards the near corner. It's taken by Idaho. As Hedrick feeds it across off the far boards. Idaho crosses center ice, and they step over the blue line. Over to the right circle, righty shot, and it goes wide. As that was taken by Wade Murphy, who's got 18 goals this season. Grizzlies cross center. They move it ahead, but Idaho pokes it away. Now it rolls towards the Idaho bench. Grizzlies move it to center ice for power, who gains center ice and loses it. As Idaho, towards the right side, steps over the line as they skate towards the corner. Now the puck glides back to neutralize from somebody off the screen. Idaho will skate towards their blue line. Now they feed it across the right. Ducharme gets it. He'll skate towards the right circle. I try to kick it out in front. It bounced off a of Grizzly. Good defensive play. I believe that's Kyle Mayhew. Puck glides towards the right point. Hedrick keeps it in. He'll skate towards his left. He'll take a righty shot. Saved by Miner as Grizzlies move it ahead. Grizz have a bounce off a stick. Goes to the right point as Pelton by spins along the boards. Idaho on the far side. Over in the corners, Luke Martin drags down Kuzmans. Uh, Kuzmensis, I'll have to ask Johnny Walker how to pronounce his former college teammate's name as it goes back behind the net as Misiak goes down as no call as Idaho gets back to their feet. Grizzlies have outshot the Steelheads 3-2 to two here in the second period. As he's going over in the high slot, gets it to Misiak. Misiak right circle, lefty shot, and gets blocked by Miner out in traffic out in front as looks like Grizzlies doing a good job protecting their crease as Dylan Fitz crosses the center ice, he'll Lifted across, it ricochets off the far boards. Now Haskin and cuts in front of Dylan Wells. They'll move it ahead to center ice as Idaho. Back at neutral ice, Grizzlies doing a good job challenging Idaho at neutral ice. Still heads back at their blue line, backing out. As Haskin and feeds it across, Idaho gains center ice, and they'll chip it in. Utah chases after it as getting its Kyle Mayhew in the corner. Mayhew in his pro debut, gets around one skater. Mayhew skates down the middle, he crosses center ice. He'll gain the offensive line. He'll throw a left wing pass to Simeone, who has a glance off his stick. As Kawaguchi moves out to neutralize, as a right wing pass to Franklin connects. Franklin gets around a skater, but a good poke check by Utah. That's Aaron Tho, who fanned on clearing it across. It glides along the near boards. Jade Miller at center ice will throw it back into the stillhead zone. Idaho from left to right will cross center ice. Still has their 25th year of existence. They'll get to Zane Franklin, but the Eagle Eye linesman Scott DeBoss says the Steelheads were offside with 12.44 left in the second. No one scored here so far in the second period as Idaho leads 2-1 to one on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Idaho leads Utah 2-1, to one, but interesting action in the Mountain Division. Savannah and Allen are in a barn burner. Oh, it's a barn burner and nail-biter. Tyson down and Allen. It's 5-5 with under two minutes to go in the third period. So it looks like Allen might get a standing point, but will they get two? I don't know. If the Ghost Pirates have something to say about it, it's going to come right down to the wire. Both teams have three shots in this second period. Idaho's outshot Utah 17-10. As it draws at Neutrice after Idaho's call for offside, still heads win it as Register on the right side dumps it in. As Puck glides along the boards, Grizzlies over in the far corner, left wing shot saved by Miner. Grizzlies get it. As Utah will carry it out to center ice and dump it in. As chasing after it is Jordan Martell as Dylan Wells with number one on the back of his jersey, throws to the far side, Grizzlies gather it. As Utah around the net trying to get it across to Martell, it kicks back towards the right point as Cameron Wright 
will fire shot saved by Wells. Looks like he holds on, but a crafty shot by Cameron right, right over in the right point. He tried to fire it towards the net as Wright yells as he thought he had one there. As looked like Messner and Martel were out in front of the net, and Wright really with a crafty shot there from the right side. No wonder why that guy leads all league rookies in shots. He can fire them from anywhere. Oh, he sure can rifle them, Tyson. I really like the chemistry that that line has put together here in this game. You think about Messner, Martel, and Al Cameron right all in that same line. I really like, I mean, in Messner's first game with the Grizzlies, he's looked fantastic. You pair him with the Roosters red hot. I like that line a lot. Draws in the near circle of Idaho zone. Still heads win it as Owen Hedrick moves ahead. Idaho glides out to center ice. Grizzlies throw it to the center ice logo and back it out themselves as Corey Thomas an outlet pass. It's intercepted as Willie Nerum tries to drop it off for Becker. Now Becker enters from the right side, but the still heads are offside as the puck exited the blue line as looked like Nerum was trying to drop it off for Becker, but the puck uh, you know, went to neutral ice and Becker wearing the college style mask will look forward. I think Becker is one of those guys. He's played with a couple different former Grizzly, you know, different uh, current Grizzlies in his college career. As Jack Becker wearing number 27, played at the University of Michigan for three years from 2017 through 2021, where he was a teammate with Luke Martin and Dakota Rabies. The Grizzlies win the draw, gain center ice and dump it and make that the Steelheads. Grizzlies skating from right to left as Jared Power along the near boards. Gets the new tries, fires it across. Power gets blasted off the screen as Jameson battles with Kudlow over there. As goes Matt Kudlow. Now just a Becker lifts it into the air. It's gloved by Fitz, but it's at new tries as Fitz knocks down a still head. As Grizzlies enter the zone, Jameson in the area continues to battle. Still heads will cross center ice with the puck and they'll dump it in. As chasing after it's Thomas and Corey Mc, as, uh, Thomas and Connor McDonald. As Miner glides along the near side, it goes to center ice where it's taken by Haskinen, who according to the box score has two goals tonight, although we believe Zane Franklin scored late in the first period. As it goes to the far side, Grizzlies clearing out to center. As Ida will chip it to Haskinen, who glides it ahead. It goes towards near him. It goes past him and deep in the Grizzlies. Um, as Corey Thomas gets blasted in the corner by Murphy, Grizzlies will clear it out to center ice. Hot pass almost connected as Pfizer is leaning towards it deep in the stillhead zone. Pfizer now gathers the puck. will drop it off for Cutler around the net as Cutler skates towards the right circle after the puck. Idaho gets there first. Now they chip it to Pender trying to get back to Luke Martin. He gets it in the right circle. Take a shot. Saved by Wells. Well, there's a scrum over in the far corner. It kicked towards Penner who fed it to the far circle for Martin. And Luke Martin gathered it, took a nice-looking righty shot, but Wells made the save with eight thir- with uh, 10.39 left in the seconds. We're about halfway through the scheduled 60 minutes. But, guy, it looks like Luke Martin's about been about as good as he's ever been. He's off to a good start. Yeah, he is off to a great start, Tyson. That's what I was talking about in the pregame with that familiarity. Luke Martin jumps right back into the Grizzlies lineup. Looks like he hasn't missed a beat. He's been terrific. So still adds two, and the Grizzlies won. 10.39 is left in the second period. It looks like Dylan Wells is not in net. And it looks like um, A.J. White over there with Matt Register. And it looks like maybe there's some blood over in the crease that they're looking over. Wells is to the corner as they're repairing a piece of ice over in front of the crease. As Idaho leads 2-1, to one, and it looks like barring a last-second goal, Savannah and Allen are going to go to overtime. So Allen's going to pick up at least one standing point tonight. And we'll see who gets that second point as... The playoff picture is really heating up. And remember, this is the next-to-last road game for the Grizzlies this season. The last road game will be on Friday at 7 o'clock. And then the Grizzlies return home as they'll be at Maverick Center for the final four regular season games. A Saturday will be the next home game for the Grizzlies. It's Asian American Pacific Islanders night as they'll take on the Idaho Steelheads for the 18th and final time this season. As they're working on some piece of the ice, as looks like somebody must have bled and had it trickle across center ice, and you know, it must have happened away from the screen, so we don't really know what happened as Idaho leads 2-1. to one. Then the Tulsa Oilers will be in town for a big three-game series Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday of next week. Don't forget next Wednesday is the final Bud Light College night of the season. That's going to be on April 12th, and then April 14th is the final AFCU Friday of the regular season. With AFCU Friday, tickets start just $8 when you pay using your AFCU debit or credit card to the Maverick Center box office. The season finale of the regular season will be on Saturday, April 15th. That's 10 days from now, and that's going to be Star Wars night and fan appreciation night all wrapped all, uh, all, all up into one. That's going to be a lot of fun. Two great promotions in one night 
Fan Appreciation Night and Star Wars Night. They're really doing some serious work on the ice there as either someone drew some serious blood on the ice or they're having some issues. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, Tyson. They're doing a whole lot of scraping and a whole lot of shoveling, uh, but it gives us time to really talk about the playoff picture and the Grizzlies' next homestand. I mean, I talked about the Grizzlies' schedule lightening up. You think four of their last six, this game included, are at home. And that certainly goes in the Grizzlies' favor. But then you got the Tulsa Oilers for three games at Maverick Center to close out the season. Now, Tulsa, eh, there will be no playoffs in Oklahoma this season. We can be sure of that as the Oilers are 21-35, 8-1. So they got 51 points. So they're at the bottom. So schedule certainly goes in the Grizzlies' favor. Back to live action. Idaho wins the draw back in their own zone. They'll carry it into the offensive end. Now Utah gathers it and crosses center ice. As Brandon Cutler spins along the wall as Dylan Wells plays behind his net. Grizzlies back check. Now Cutler gets it. Left wing shot saved by Wells. And Dylan Wells holds on with 10-17 left in the second as Matt Register and Brandon Cutler pat each other on the back. Like Cutler's one of those energy players. You know, you get him. He's one of those guys He's really great in motion and great in the transition game, and he really does a good job on that left wing just kind of moving things along. And with Cam Strong and Dakota Raby out of action, both guys left wings, Brandon Cutler has really uh, stepped in and played that role. As Matt Register told Brandon Cutler, you stay away from my goaltender, and if not, I'm going to do some serious damage to you. Drown's going to be over the near circle, and it's taken by Cameron Wright, who hasn't taken a lot of faceoffs this year, but he's taken them tonight on that line with Martell and Messner. As draw goes towards the near boards, Grizzlies gather it. Martell's already got one goal tonight, trying to kick it out in front to right, and it goes wide of the mark as it glides towards the far boards. As there's a big rugby scrum over there as Martell and Tho look on. Ido comes out of the scrum of the puck as they'll skate around Dylan Wells' net turnover. Right over to Martell, left wing righty shot, saved by Wells. As why well, it looked like Idaho turned the puck over to the near side as right fed Martell just outside the left circle, but Wells made a good save with 9.51. Left in the second. It's 2-1 still heads. No one scored here so far in the second. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, Surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Still the, it's still Idaho 2, Utah 1. No one scored here so far in the second period. But, Guy, I think you have to like the offense's zone time the Grizzlies are generating here in the second period. Oh, for sure, Tyson. I think the Grizzlies have done a lot more in the offensive zone in the second period than they did in the first. It seems like they're just knocking at the door, really pushing the narrative here. Let's see if they can get the next one. Offensive zone draw for the Grizzlies is won by Idaho. As Idaho skates from left to right, they'll get it out to center ice. Grizzlies gather it. And we'll fling it in from the far side as Dylan Wells behind the net gets it as Idaho skates from left to right. Grizzlies from right to left in this second period. As we're past the halfway point of the scheduled 60 minutes as Idaho looking for a victory, which would be their 31st at home this season. That would break a league record as Hayes going to move ahead to Willie Naram in the right point. He'll dump it to the left corner as Idaho glides it back towards Hayes on the right side. He'll feed it across for register. He'll fire a lefty shot saved by Miner. Rebound goes to Utah. As Messner moves it ahead, Grizzlies cross center ice, and Cameron Wright dumps it in as Haskinen chases after it. About nine minutes left in the second period as Haskinen gets to the far side. He collides along the boards with Tho. As Grizzlies have outshot the stillhead 7-4 to four here in the second period as Luke Martin skates around Miner's net. Martin makes a nice move around Murphy. Now Martin glides a right-wing pass, and the Grizzlies' Terran Pfizer taps it in. As Penner chases after it, he gets held up by Hedrick as the puck glides towards the near corner. Idaho will shovel it ahead as Murphy crosses center ice. Murphy gets around James Shure. He's now on the right side. Shure trying to poke it away as Murphy glides it across. Luke Martin, who's a native of St. Louis, Missouri, will fire it to center ice. Grizzlies with a right wing pass. They enter the attack zone. Utah throws it to Shure, passes wide of the mark, and Wade Murphy gets it. He sails it down the other end. 
as we get a whistle. And it looks like the Grizzlies are going to be on the power play for the first time tonight as Casey Johnson broke a hockey rule. And the North Dakota native is going to sit in the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell for two minutes. So for the first time tonight, the Grizzlies will be on the power plays. It looked like Casey Johnson held up Luke Martin, and that's what the referee called. Johnson thinks that, you know, Johnson thinks otherwise, but he's in the penalty box. And guy will be interesting to see what this power play looks like. I imagine Luke Martin's going to be quarterbacking things, even though he just showed up a bit, about a day ago. As Jamison's taking the face off, rights to on the right wing, Pfizer to the left. Up top is Brandon Cutler, and we can't tell who's on the right side. Boy, the press box in Idaho would be a nice place to figure out who's on that right point. I imagine it's Luke Martin. As Jamison will take the draw, and it's won by Utah, and it is Luke Martin over to Cutler. Cutler back to Martin. He tapped it to the right side for Pfizer. Pfizer skates towards the far corner. He'll get it to Jamison behind the net. Jamison gets spun around by Haskinen as Idaho gathers it, and they clear it out. Miner to the side of his net gets it, and he'll drop it off for Luke Martin behind the net. Martin skates around it. Martin was on Utah's top power play unit last season. As he gets around the center ice, loses the puck, Idaho will sell it back towards the Grizzlies' end again. Taron Pfizer gets it from Miner as he'll get over towards Luke Martin, who was an all-star this season in the league with Jacksonville. As Utah gains center ice, they'll drop it back off as Grizz cross center. Pfizer in the right wing gains the blue line. Now the Grizzlies back it out to neutralize. As Grizzlies will back it out into their own zone as they want to enter with momentum. Martin across to Jamison as we're about halfway through the power play. Jamison across to Pfizer, skates down the middle. He gets taken away by Register, goes down. Right wing pass, Grizzlies skeet towards the circle. Martin with a shot and it goes wide. Wells might have gotten a piece of it as it glides along the near wing boards. 50 seconds left in the power play as Miner sails it towards Martell as the Grizzlies make a line change. Martell skates around Miner's net with speed. Now Martell gains center ice in the right wing. Martell steps over the blue line as he'll veer off to the left point. As Martell drops it off for Mayhew, but the puck eggs at the zone. Actually, it wasn't Mayhew. Um, it was somebody else. And now Mayhew gets it. And I think that's James Shearer with Mayhew. As Mayhew gets it to Shearer, I love these remote broadcasts. They bring so much joy to my life. As Grizzlies throw it out to center, Utah steps over the blue line. As Martell over towards Penner, skates towards the left circle, back to Martell. Up top for sure, 15 seconds left in the power play. As Mayhew throws to the right side, Grizzlies with a right wing shot. Saved by Wells. Rebound goes to Idaho, clears and out. Miner behind his net, 6.30 and counting left in the second. As coming out of the penalty box is Casey Johnson right now. Both teams row for one on the power plays. The Grizzlies will cross center ice. Mayhew with good speed, enters the offensive zone. He battles with Cudlin. Now it goes to the right point, right wing shots blocked. As Idaho will move it out to center ice. Still adds glide across center. Idaho leads 2-1. to one. No one scored here so far in the second period. Christian Simeone will throw a blue line to blue line pass. It connects. Grizzly skate in. Right wing shot. And bounces wide off the end boards. Fitz looking for a second chance. And it goes wide as Fitz was able to get it from Simeone. Now Messner left circle shot. Saved by Wells. As Mick Messner with a good look from the left side. But Dylan Wells makes the save with 5.53 left in the second. Good pass by Simeone out in front to Dylan Fitz, who had a breakaway, and Fitz missed the net as he ricocheted off the end boards as Fitz tried to go stick side on Dylan Wells, as Wells did a good job coming out of the crease to cut off some of the shooting angle. We're back in one minute as Idaho leads Utah 2-1 to one on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Maverick's new bean-to-cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. Interesting action in the Mountain Division. Idaho leads Utah 2-1, to one, but that Savannah-Allen game has come to a conclusion. Well, Tyson, the Grizzlies owe somebody in Savannah a dinner because the Savannah Ghost Pirates, in overtime, have defeated the Allen Americans by the score of 6-5. to five. So Allen does pick up one standing point. So for the moment, they sit alone at second place in the Mountain Division with 69 standing points. But if the Grizzlies were to win here tonight, they would be able to tie that and be at 69. So tight division race, Allen only picks up a point tonight. If you ever run into Brent Peterson, dinner is on the Grizzlies as Peterson scored 122 into overtime as Savannah came away with the extra standing point 
Allen comes away with one point tonight, and they're now in second place by themselves with 69 points this season. Drawing the stillhead zone, it's one by Idaho. No one scored here so far in the second period. Idaho leads two to one. Grizzlies back on their own end, skating five from five on five as Luke Martin will sell it across. That's right, Luke Martin back for his second stint in a Grizzlies uniform. Tyler Penner battles with Register deep in the stillhead zones. The puck glides towards the far side as Penner chips it up top. It's taken away by Idaho. As the Stillheads do a great job defensively, limiting scoring chances. The Stillheads will glide it out to center ice for Franklin near the bench area. He crosses center, and he'll drive it to the left corner. Luke Martin chases after it. He glides it to the near side. The Grizzlies with a one-on-one battle. They move it out to the high slot. Register keeps it in as he'll feed it towards the right corner as Franklin uh, battles with Sure. Now it goes to the right side for Register, who will skate towards the right circle. As Register going against Pfizer, skates around the net, does Register. As the defenseman will kick it out in front, it goes past Franklin out towards the near boards. Grizzlies throw it to the left side as Utah is able to clear the zone. Grizzlies gather the puck. They cross center ice, and they'll drive a shot saved by Wells. Rebound goes to right. We'll skate around the net. Right, try to chip it out in front. The only guy there was a stillhead. Idaho skates towards the near side. They'll cross center ice, and it's poked away by Mayhew. Grizzlies re-enter. They skate towards the right side. Messner drops it off. Right, right wing shot saved by Wells. Puck goes around the rooster and out to center ice and deep into the Grizzly zone as it glides along the near wing boards as Trent Miner back behind his net will get it to Kyle Mayhew in his pro debut. He'll feed it across from one corner to the other to Aaron Tho. Tho chips it ahead and uh, still has taken away. Idaho to the left side, looks to center it. The pass goes wide. Hayes again on the right point, feeds to the right circle. Now up top for Bice, who tried to reach it, and he glides it towards Kudla. Kudla to the left side, back to Bice. Lefty one-timer goes wide. Miner might have gotten a piece of it as Idaho towards the near side as they get it back up top, and they feed it to the high slot for Kudla. Will glide towards the left circle. He gathers it and loses it for Martell. As Martell glides it ahead, Grizzlies two on two. As right to the right side, gets it across to Martell. Martell back in shot, saved by Wells. As the Grizzlies had a pretty good look as it was a two-on-two, and the Grizzly and the Stillheads had Messner covered up pretty good, and he was covered up by Ducharme. Right was able to get it across to a cutting Martell. Martell gathered it to the left side, didn't have much time, and just fired a backhand shot that Wells made the save on. But the Grizzlies doing a good job offensively in that transition game. Yeah, they are, Tyson. We talked about in the intermission, the Grizzlies needed to take more shots. Well, so far in the second period, the Grizzlies are out shooting Idaho. 14-4 to four with that most recent shot. So the Grizzlies definitely pushing the narrative offensively. Jamison taking the draw in the near circle. As we're still, it's still Idaho 2-1. No one scored here so far in the second period. As Jamison's kicked out of the faceoff circle, Dylan Fitz will take the draw for Utah. As draw won by the Grizzlies. As Fitz over to the left side, skates towards a point, fires a righty shot that goes wide. As Puck over to the far corner. Idaho skates around their net. As still had skating from left to right as Jack Becker. We'll get to Owen Hedrick, who's behind the net. He'll get it back to Becker, who skates along the near side. Becker in a college-style mask. So he'll cross center ice. He gets around Jamison. Now Becker gets around power, skates towards the left circle. Power as uh, Becker chips it out in front and bounces off a minor. Grizzlies come back the other way. As Utah crosses center, they dump it in. As Power chases after it, had to get around two stillheads. Idaho back up with it. Big-time hit delivered behind Idaho's net as the stillheads cross center. Becker will chip it to his right. Nearham couldn't skate over there as Utah slices it around the boards. Goes to the near side at center ice. Now deep in the stillhead zone as Matt Register gathers it. Both teams make a line change. Less than three minutes left in the second period as Register moves ahead. Now the stillhead's quick in the transition game. Left wing shot goes wide as Register gets uh, Franklin gets hit along the boards. Grizzlies will cross center. As Utah steps over the line, Pfizer tries to get around Register as Pfizer gets blasted in the far corner by Register. Pfizer gets held up by register, no call. The officials are letting him play tonight. As Luke Martin over to the right, the far side, gets poked away by Franklin, who lifts it out to center ice. Grizzlies gathered at the Utah blue line as James Shear will get it across to Martin. As Martin goes down in the far corner, he'll get back to his feet as he'll skate around Utah's net. Idaho holds him up as Shear skates over there and slices along the near wing boards. It's cut off in the right point by Haskinen. We'll get it to Kawaguchi. I tries to feed the pile out in front of the net and it bounced off a stick and glides to the far side. Idaho moves it up top to the left point. Now across to Haskin in. He'll take a right wing shot and it's blocked out in front by Martin. As Franklin gets it to the left side, less than two minutes left in the period, across to Haskin and I tries to find fired out in front of the net and it gets kicked away. 
Still heads over to the left side. Franklin keeps it in, and they try to get to register who couldn't handle it. Grizzlies gliding out to center ice. Utah across the center. Cutler skates in. He'll throw it to the corner for Penner. Now across to Pfizer behind the goal line. He'll chip it up top for Tho. Tho with a right wing pass towards Pfizer in the right circle. As Pfizer will try to find it out in front to Cameron Wright. Shot saved by Wells. As he had to be an acrobat to make that save as Idaho will carry it across center ice. Still adds. Glide towards the left circle. They get around Aaron Tho. They chip it out in front. Wright picks it off and he'll tap it off the near glass. It goes to Idaho, who will slice it back into the offensive zone as Miner gets to Kyle Mayhew in the near corner. Mayhew gets blasted by Wade Murphy as Hedrick over on the right point will tap it across off the boards. Idaho's able to gather it. Mayhew in the area as him and Wade Murphy both collide. Grizzlies get the puck as Utah's outshot Idaho 14 to 5 in the second period. Grizzlies cross center. They throw a right wing pass. Utah gets to Martell. Martell. Spins it along the boards. It goes to the near side as Wright kicks it across. Martell out in front is Messner. Now Messner skates behind the net to get the puck. As Messner's already got one assist tonight, Idaho gets it. 30 seconds left in the period. They'll clear it out to center. Connor McDonald back in the Grizzly zone. will skate around Trent Miner as Miner has some words for McDonald. As 20 seconds and counting are left in the second period. McDonald skates down the middle. He'll glide it to the far side as Utah will cross center, and they'll dish it in as Wells behind his net will throw up between the legs of Hedrick as Utah goes down to the near side as Power glides it along with five seconds left in the period. Utah to the right side. They get it up top. It goes past Corey Thomas, and it spins all the way into the Grizzlies zone, and that will do it for two periods of play over at Idaho Central Arena as neither team scored a goal, but the Grizzlies did dominate the shot count. Last we checked, 14-5 to five was the edge for the Grizzlies in the second period, but nobody was able to find the back of the net. The Grizzlies do have a shot edge, but it's still Idaho two and Utah one is right now. The ECHL box score still has Cody Haskin and scoring two goals, although we think that second one might've been scored by Zane Franklin. Jordan Martel got the scoring started 10 43 into the contest with Mayhew and Messner getting the assist. And for Mayhew and Messner, both making their pro debuts, they get their first point out of the way on the Martel goal, 10 43 and but two unanswered by Idaho. And with nobody scoring in the second period, Idaho will maintain a one-goal lead. And the Stillheads have been absolutely outstanding when leading after two periods this season where their record is 45-2. and two. Can the Grizzlies reverse that trend? We'll see what happens here in the final 20 minutes of regulation. It's possible this game could be one of those. They're headed for overtime, and that'd certainly be big for the Grizzlies where every standings point is important here late in the regular season. When we come back, Guy Krenz will recap the first two periods of play, and we'll also talk some hockey as we're through 40 minutes over at Idaho Central Arena. And it's the Stillheads 2 and the Grizzlies 1. We're back in two minutes on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can. 
and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Welcome back to the Grizzlies Hockey Network presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. It's the second intermission report where it's the Steelheads 2 and the Grizzlies 1 after 40 minutes of play. I'm Guy Carenza alongside Tyson Whiting, and we're just chilling here in the Maverick Center lobby as the Grizzlies are over at Idaho Central Arena. And it was Jordan Martell opening the scoring 10-43 into the first period, getting his 15th goal of the season. That was assisted by Kyle Mayhew and Mick Messner. Now save that puck, Mason Wayland. As that's two players picking up their first pro point on the same goal. Oh, I wonder who gets the puck. Maybe they flip a coin. We'll see. I think nobody gets the puck. I, I, maybe, maybe we got to do an interview with Mason to find out. But uh, congratulations to Cindy on the YouTube feed for correctly guessing that Jordan Martel would get the optimum first goal of the game as he scored 10 43 into the first to make it one nothing Utah. But the Steelheads did have a response. 1432 into the first. It was Cody Haskinen getting his fourth goal of the season, assisted by Kumantis and Miller. And so that made it a 1 1 game. And then late in the first period, 1757 in, it was Cody Haskinen again, although we have reason to believe that it was Zane Franklin getting that goal as he was right on the doorstep. But as of right now, they have it as Cody Haskinen getting his fifth goal of the season, making it a 2 1 game from Franklin and Miller and shots after the first period were 14 to seven in favor of Idaho. The Grizzlies did come out, go back and forth with the steelheads for a little while, but for the second half of the period, it seemed like the steelheads were dictating the terms. Well, in the second period shots were 14 to five in favor of the Grizzlies. So not sure what coach Ryan Canasta, which said in between periods, but the Grizzlies certain came out, certainly came out with a purpose in the second period as they now lead the shot count 21 to 19 overall in the game. There's only one penalty in the second period. That was Casey Johnson going to the box two minutes for hooking. Each team has had one crack at it on the power play. Neither team has scored. Utah's 0 for 1, as is Idaho. Trent Miner got the start in night for the in, in net tonight for the Grizzlies, and he has stopped 17 of 19, allowing two. And Dylan Wells gets his first start as an Idaho steal it, and he has stopped 20 of 21. Tyson, I mean, the shot count speaks for itself. We said in the first intermission that the Grizzlies needed to start taking more shots. Well, they did just that in the second frame. Yeah, I think you had to like the shot count. You had to like really the momentum, and you had to like the offensive zone time the Grizzlies had. The only thing missing was a goal. You know, Dylan Fitz had a breakaway. It was a really nice cross size pass down the middle from Simeone to Fitz. And you know, Fitz had a good look, and Dylan Wells, they showed a replay, and Wells did a good job uh, gliding out of, the, out of the crease to cut off the shooting angle from Dylan Fitz. And Fitz not one of those guys who likes to dangle and move around. He just kind of, as a matter of fact, north south guy, get to a spot and take a shot. And he ended up missing the net. And I think Wells might have contributed to that by gliding out there and cutting off some of the some of the uh, the shooting angle, especially since Fitz was skating down the middle where normally he'd be either skating to the left circle or to the right. And he really didn't have a ton of time. He just had to get to fire away as Idaho was chasing after him. And, you know, just missed the net and was looking for that second look. And then Wells was able to get that. You know, the Idaho goaltender's allowed a couple rebounds, but he's done a good job for the most part controlling rebounds. He's only left a couple there on the doorstep. And really for Utah, it's just you have to find a way to keep battling. I think you have to like the way that that Martel, Messner, and right line has looked tonight. You know, I think you have to like what Messner has brought to the table. He's brought a lot of energy and looks like he's going to be a good player. And it looks like Idaho's kind of keying on Messner. They want to make sure they've got a guy on him cutting down the middle at all times. And, you know, Cameron Wright's not taking a lot of face-offs this year, and he took a, you know, he's taken a lot of the face-offs there on that second-line forward spot. Um, so, you know, he's done a good job tonight. Really, for the Grizzlies, the only thing that's missing is some goals. You know, Martel scored halfway through the first period, and, you know, they had 14 shots in the second period. Unfortunately, they just couldn't find a way to get one pass still in Wells to tie the game. Yeah, Tyson, you're right. I mean, the only thing that's missing from that second period for the Grizzlies is goals. It was a scoreless second period. Really good defensive period from the Grizzlies. We're just moving the puck well in the Idaho zone. We're really putting on the pressure in the offensive zone, but they just couldn't buy a goal. And uh, maybe some Grizz maniacs over at Idaho Central Arena can help them out with that. It seems like Colby and Ruane are over in enemy territory uh, from what we can see on the YouTube feed. So cheer on the Grizzlies. Get loud at Idaho Central Arena for your Grizzlies. As it looks like the Grizzlies have come out and played a strong second period. So 
right for the Grizzlies, it's just you got to keep pounding that puck. And it's tough knowing that you go into the locker room doing everything right, but you just couldn't buy a goal. Grizzlies need to continue to do what they did in the second, have it carry over into the third. If you keep pounding the puck away at Wells, he's going to let one through. Uh, you mentioned those rebounds. He has been letting a few of those out in front. The Grizzlies can pick up some loose change on the doorstep. He might be able to put one home. But, man, he can't help but not think about that chance that Fitz had. Fitz isn't much of a dangler. You're right. I mean, he doesn't really deke a whole lot. He's a pretty linear player, just straight back and forth, like to shoot from the circles. Uh, so for Dylan Fitz, uh, it's just tough. You'd really like to see him hit the net, but you got to think that's a missed chance. But I thought that Jared Bauer also had a really good look in the second period. Just wasn't able, wasn't able to beat Wells, but for the Grizzlies, it's there. All the ingredients are there. You just got to find a way to bake the cake and put that baby in the oven. That's one of the things when you face Idaho. That's a pretty good line there. Right? Mm-hmm. That's one of the things with Idaho is you can play a good game and still not win. It's just uh, it's happened to the Grizzlies a couple times this season. And really, you think about you know what's going to be that game changing play. You know, could it be a power play? I mean, both teams have only had one power play so far. It looks like the officials are letting them play. Although I think I like the process of the Grizzlies power play working that five-man unit. It was a very patient approach um, with Cutler, uh, Luke Martin. You know, Jamison took the face off. He had Cameron Wright to his right. And I think, uh, if I remember right, uh, Pfizer was out there as well. So you had the two Victoria Royal products and Luke Martin, who was really part of that top power play unit last year. You know, Cameron Wright certainly can score from anywhere. And Keaton Jamison taking a lot of the big face-offs of the Grizzlies. Although I do think it's interesting to see Cameron Wright taking a lot of draws. It doesn't seem like he has taken a ton um, here so far with the Grizzlies, but he's taken a ton of faceoffs, you know, here tonight, and he's done a pretty good job in the faceoff circle. Yeah, I think he has, Tyson. And I think it was strange to see Cameron Wright be moved towards that center position when Zach Sekos went down, but I really think he's done a really good job of filling that role. Obviously, you're not going to be able to fill the role of a guy like Zach Seko, who's a really skilled player, but Cameron Wright, great player in his own right, has done a great job of filling that spot and winning faceoffs, something that he wasn't asked to do early in the year, so he's really done a good job of adapting to that new role. As for the power play, I really like what the Grizzlies were able to do when they were in the Idaho zone. Problem was, is for most of that power play, it seemed like Idaho would get the puck out of the zone, and then they would stand the Grizzlies up in the neutral zone. And the Grizzlies seemed to have a little bit of trouble on that zone entry. Uh, Earlier in the broadcast, as it was live play, you talked about the Grizzlies wanting to go with momentum through the neutral zone. I think that's because that's the only way that they could find a way to get into the Idaho zone is because the Idaho Steelheads kind of had, uh, it kind of looked like a 3-1 setup where you had one guy in the neutral zone that would pressure towards this, wherever the side the puck was, and then you have three guys standing on the blue line. So Steelheads weren't letting the Grizzlies slowly creep their way over the blue line. Grizzlies need to find a way to attack with momentum on that power play. But I like what they were doing there. I think there's something to be had. Uh, we'll see if the Grizzlies get another crack at it, but Idaho's a pretty disciplined team. I think Utah displayed a little bit more patience in the second period. I think Idaho wants you to be impatient, just get the center ice and dump it in, and just, be, just make super quick decisions, where I think in the second period the Grizzlies were a lot more patient. You know, let's make sure that we, you know, we can hang out in our own zone for a little bit. Let's just make sure when we get to neutral ice and we cross center that we find a way to get some momentum so then we can actually get to the offensive zone and get something out of it as opposed to, oh, uh, we, we cross the offensive, you know, we cross the blue line, but we lost the puck. So then we're going back the other way. And then Ido can utilize their transition game. So uh, for the Grizzlies, I thought they were a lot smarter with their decisions in the second period. Yeah, Tyson, I agree. I think just playing smart is how you beat the Steelheads. And the Steelheads, are <laughs> they're a really good team. They don't make a lot of mistakes, but when they do, the Grizzlies need to find a way to capitalize on them. And I really think just hockey in general, not just this game specifically, but whoever dictates the neutral zone usually is going to end up winning that game. So for the Grizzlies, it's can you find a way to dictate the terms of the neutral zone, something that Idaho is really good at? If you can, you're going to have more opportunities off the transition, off the rush. And in turn, you're probably going to get more shots and more goals, which is what we saw in the second period. So for the Grizzlies, they were doing everything right in the second frame, just couldn't get a goal. But I'd like to see that again in the third. That'll be a fun third period as Idaho leads two to one. When we come back, we'll go over some scores from around the world of sports and we'll have third period action. We'll give you an update on that Savannah Allen game as that's gone final in overtime. We'll talk about the updated Mountain Division standings. And have third period action as Idaho leads Utah two to one on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today.
I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Second intermission over Idaho Central Arena. Idaho leads 2-1. to one. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Karenza. We're in the lobby at Maverick Center. Just hanging out on a Wednesday night and having some fun talking hockey. Savannah defeated Allen 6-5 to five in overtime as Brent Peterson scored the game winner 122 into overtime, and Peterson had himself quite a night as he had three goals and two assists and was a plus three for Savannah as the Ghost Pirates come away with the extra standing point. But because Allen lost in overtime, they get something out of the night as the Americans, as we speak, have 69 standings points, and they are now in second place all by themselves by one point over Kansas City and Wichita. Earlier today, Wichita defeated Tulsa 3-1. to one. So Kansas City and Wichita each have 68 standings points and are tied for third. And the Grizzlies have 67 standings points and are in fifth place by themselves. Rapid City is in sixth place with 65 points. Tomorrow, obviously, if you got flow sports, you can watch uh, Rapid City take on Wichita. Tomorrow evening, face off for that game in the Mountain Time Zone will be at 6.05. So you can do a little bit of scoreboard watching. And if you're on Flow Sports, you can watch Rapid City and Wichita do battle tomorrow evening over in Trust Bank Arena. Other scores from the league, the ECHL, otherwise known as the Jungle. Florida defeats Jacksonville 4-2. It was also a 4-2 finals. Maine defeated the Worcester Railers. Three NHL games tonight. Two have gone final. Rangers over the Lightning 6-3 to in a game that was played on national TV on TNT. Flames beat the Jets 3-1, to and after one period on TNT, the Edmonton Oilers and Anaheim Ducks are scoreless. Anaheim will be on the power play to start the second period, and that's certainly an interesting one. I think Edmonton's certainly an interesting team with Connor McDavid uh, and Leon Dreisaitl. Is, could this be the year that Edmonton breaks through? I think the fun thing about the NHL playoffs, and really the playoffs – in any level of professional hockey is you just get to playoff time and you really have no clue who's going to end up winning the whole thing. I mean, obviously, if you're looking at the ECHL, you'd look at Toledo, Cincinnati, Idaho as being favorites, you know, New Finland out east. But uh, it's anybody's race right now. And, guy, even though Idaho obviously having an outstanding regular season, you get to playoff time and it's anybody's race. It's certainly going to be a lot of fun here the next few weeks. Oh, it's going to be a ton of fun. And the playoffs, you're right, are a whole different animal. I mean, just look at here tonight. If the Grizzlies and Steelheads were to meet in the first round, I think that would be a very tough series for the Steelheads. I mean, look at the Grizzlies. They're going toe-to-toe with the best team in the league, and they're only down by a goal. So really tight, really close. Only time will tell, but you're right. It's going to be a lot of fun. Idaho nursing a one-goal lead. Obviously, they're not going to sit back on it, but obviously they're a team that's – Protected leads pretty well this season. They are 45-2 and two when leading after two, and maybe the most impressive stats they've had a lead after two periods in 45 different games this season. I think you had to like what you, the Grizzlies were able to get offensively, with the only exception being that they didn't score a goal in that second frame. Third period's going to be big, though. How many shots do you think the Grizzlies need to, in order to have a successful third period? I think they need around what they had in the second period, around 14 shots in this final frame. I think they really need to push – uh, the pressure onto the Idaho zone. But good teams adapt, Tyson. I really think that the Steelers are going to come out here in the third and really attack the Grizzlies differently than they did in the second period. So the question is, is can the Grizzlies adapt to what the Steelheads throw at them? That's going to be the key in whoever wins this game. His first stint in his, his uh, first game in his second stint with the Grizzlies, Luke Martin has three shots. Martin was reassigned from the AHL's Colorado Eagles 
a couple days ago in his professional debut. Kyle Mayhew has one assist and one shot. And Mick Messner wearing number 25 has one assist and so far has taken one shot for the Grizzlies. And Messner and Mayhew will make their home debuts on Saturday night. And it'll be good to see Luke Martin on Saturday night when the Grizzlies take on the Idaho Steelheads. It's going to be Asian American Pacific Islanders night. Looks like there are some Grizzlies fans in attendance on this Wednesday evening. Looks like they're all having a good time. Maybe I should have gotten in the car and driven with them. As looks like they're having a good time there on a Friday night or on Wednesday night. Uh, both teams will meet on Friday over in Boise. Uh, tickets are pretty tough to get as they hold about 40, 5,200 over at Idaho Central Arena. Draws going to be at center ice. Grizzlies in the white jerseys with black numbers and professional green trim as Penner wins the draw. Utah skating from left to right as Luke Martin gets over to Shearer. As Shearer at the Utah blue line throws it across to Martin. As Luke Martin wearing number 44, which is what he wore last season. Still feed it to the near side for Pfizer, who glides it out to center ice. Left wing, Martel crosses the center, make that cutler and drives it around as Pfizer to the right side gets knocked down, and he collides with the goal post. The net gets dislodged as Pfizer with a good look from the right side as Jade Miller arguing with Justin Meziak as Taron Pfizer was able to split the double team. He got knocked down, and I don't know if a penalty is going to be called as they put the net back in place 23 seconds into the third period, but the Grizzlies... Won the face off. They're patient with our approach through a couple long range passes and were able to get into the offense's zone deep. Yeah, Tyson, I think that's key is winning face offs, taking possession, and going right down into the steelhead zone. That's where you want to see most of the play in this third period is to the right, or I guess our right on flow sports in the steelhead zone. Penner's going to take the face off. He's got Pfizer and Cutler out there, and up top are Martin and James Shearer. Draws in the near circle of the steelhead zone. Scott DeBaugh, the linesman, drops the puck. Grizzlies win it. They get up top. Martin, left wing shot, saved by Wells. Martin over in the left point gets it. As he tries to throw it to the corner, Idaho takes it away. Martin at center ice gets hit. And skating over there is Zane Franklin. Now it gets kicked back to Martin as he skates towards the Utah blue line. He'll chip it across to Shearer. Skates behind Trent Miner's net. 45 seconds into the third period. Still had still lead 2-1. to one. Nobody has scored since late in the first period as Shearer glides it to the near side for Pfizer, who feeds across for Martin. Luke enters the zone. He stops in the left point as he gets over to Shearer. Now to the corner for Cutler, who glides it around. Puck kind of slowly going from one corner to the other as Ido gets out to the right point. Martin centers it towards the high slot, and Penner dumps it to the corner. Ido skates around Wells' net as he'll carry it towards center ice and move it ahead, looking for Murphy, who couldn't reach it. Taken by Kyle Mayhew in his pro debut. Mayhew gets pushed along the near corner. Luckily, he got back to his feet. He got pushed a little awkwardly as Pfizer gets over to Messner. Messner loses the puck in neutral ice. A.J. White will fire it towards Miner. Miner makes the save as it glides towards Mayhew, who gets over to Cameron Wright, who gets pushed now behind Utah's net. Idaho carries it to the right side. Looked like the Grizzlies got away with a trip as Idaho around towards Kawaguchi. He's behind the net as Kawaguchi. A lot of traffic out in front will bounce it off a Messner stick. It glides towards the near side as A.J. White feeds it back to the corner that he vacated. Idaho looks to center. Cameron Wright picks it off. Grizzly skate from right to left or from left to right. As Cameron Wright crosses the center, Jip ships it across. Oh, he feeds it out in front to Martel and it goes wide as the puck lifted on right stick about chest high. Idaho crosses the center. Three on two. Still let's get over to Bice. He'll feed it towards Mill. Swing, and Domowski didn't get much on the one-timer in the slot. As he'll gather it on the rebound, Belton Bice over to the right side. One-timer goes wide. Grizzlies get it off the boards as Jamison across towards Martell. Martell gets it to the left side, trying to chip it to the corner. Bounced off a still head. Now it rolls back behind Idaho's net as Hedrick will move it along the far side. Grizzlies, left point, lefty shot, saved by Wells. He holds on 17-29 left in the third, but the pace looks like it's in Utah's favor in the first two and a half minutes of the third period. Definitely, Tyson. The Grizzlies have had possession more often than the Steelheads had, and when they have had possession, it's been right down in the Steelhead zone. I really like the cracks that the Grizzlies are getting out in front. We talked about needing to station a guy out in front of Wells and really pick up that loose change when he lets in the, out those rebounds. Grizzlies have been able to do that so far, so I like the way the Grizzlies have come out to play in this third period. Lots of energy. Draw one by the Grizzlies as Shearer gets to Luke Martin, who skates towards the left circle. Martin stops in the corner as he'll feed it up top for Shearer. Shearer in the left point surveys as he gets around near him. He'll skate towards the left circle, take a lefty shot, and it goes wide. 
As Puck's still in play, Idaho gets it. The Steelheads carried out to center ice. Grizzlies back defensively. Utah takes it away. Visor skates towards the right circle. Visor now to the near goal line. He skates around the net. Visor to the left side. He'll chip it over to Cutler. He'll take a left wing shot. And it's blocked out in front of Wells. Idaho comes back the other way. As the Steelheads cross center ice. Kuzmansis will throw it to the right side. I try to find Kuzmansis around the net. As it goes back to the near side as Pfizer kicks it across to Schurz in the corner. Back to Pfizer behind the net. Idaho takes it away. Still heads. Skate towards the far corner and lose the puck. As Luke Martin glides it across as Pfizer chips it airborne into Stillheads territory. It's gathered by Stillheads. They move it ahead from their blue line. Idaho skates towards the right circle. Lefty shot saved by Miner. As Dylan Fitz gets it, he'll move it to center ice. Grizzlies cross center. Aaron Tho for the right wing pass to Jameson at the right point. He'll get it to Fitz. Right, right wing. Righty shot goes wide as it goes back to Idaho. So still heads cross center as Kawaguchi to the right circle. Takes a shot saved by Miner in the butterfly position as it goes back towards the near corner. As Utah will move it across as Fitz couldn't reach it. Idaho at center ice skates towards their blue line. They get it across to Casey Johnson. Four minutes into the third period, Idaho still leads two to one as Johnson lifts it in the air. It ricochets off the end boards on one hop of the ice. Mayhew throws to the far side as Jamison will get it across. Utah crosses center and dumping it in is Corey Thomas, who chases after it with good speed. Thomas was outstanding in the Wichita series. Before that, he missed about a month and a half as Idaho will throw it out to center ice. As Jade Miller dumps it in as McDonald chases after it. Puck glides along the far boards. Idaho couldn't keep in the offensive zone. This goes out to center ice as Franklin back in his own end will chip it across to Kubla. Patrick Cubba, one of the best defensemen in the league, will lift it out to center. It's behind Franklin. Simeone gets it. He skates down the middle. Simeone will chip it to his left, but everybody stops skating as it looks like the Grizzlies are called offside. With 15-19 left in the third, a lot of transition game working on, but it looks like the Grizzlies really are making good decisions with the puck. Yeah, they're playing smart hockey, Tyson, and that's what we talked about earlier. That's how you beat the Steelheads, just making smart decisions. And, oh, by the way, the Grizzlies, you're, you're right, are winning the transition battle right now. So everything's favoring the Grizzlies. All the momentum is in Utah's favor. Utah's outshot Idaho 4-2 to two so far in the third period. Grizzlies have a 25-21 to 21 edge so far in the contest. Neutral zone draft to the Grizzlies were called for offside, and it's taken and won by Idaho. As the Stillheads get over to Patrick Covell on the near side, as he'll drop it off. As the Stillheads with a right-wing pass that doesn't connect, Grizzlies moving out to center ice. Simeone couldn't get it as Idaho enters from the left side as Jade Miller will veer off to the right. He'll drop it off to the high slot for Owen Hedrick, who will station himself in the left point. He'll roll it around the boards. Goes past Zane Franklin as Martin in the area, along with a stillhead. Messner over there as well. Makes his first name as Idaho chips out to the right circle. Lefty shot saved by Miner. What a stop by Trent as Domowski had a good look from the right circle. And Domowski is one of the best goal scorers in the league with 28 this season. But Trent Miner, well, it looks like he's got a warrant for highway robbery as he denies Ryan Domowski. <laughs> he's the most wanted man in Idaho right now, Tyson. Trent Miner has really played a phenomenal game. Domowski skates towards the bench. 14-47 left in regulation. Draws going to be in the far circle as Idaho looking for some insurance. and Utah trying to tie it up. It's the Stillheads 2, the Grizzlies 1. Utah wins the draws. Luke Martin gets it. He skates down the middle. He had an overtime game winner against Orlando last year in the middle of the season. He'll get to Pfizer. Right wing, Pfizer crosses center ice, and he'll lift it into the left corner. Pfizer chases after it. He gets the puck because he leads the Grizzlies with 25 goals this season. Over to the left point to Shira. Across to Martin. He will chip it to the corner. Penner battles with Bice. And puck rolls towards the left side. Skating over there is Penner back towards Cutler. And the Grizzlies from the corner bouncing off of Penner stick who is out in front of the net. Now behind the net, Penner battles. But Idaho had strength in the numbers as they'll tap it off the near glass. It goes to center ice. They get around Pfizer. Pfizer with a good poke check there to take it away from Willie Narum. As Pfizer were glided, Grizzlies at neutralize. We get a whistle. And it looks like Scott DeBaugh, the linesman, pointed out something around center ice. 14.05 is left in the second as they stop play. And let's see. Well, the draw is going to be at center ice. We, we don't know what the whistle is for. <laughs> <laughs> just the, the linesman got tired. Just said, well, stop play. Let's have a face off at center ice. Draw one by the Grizzlies as Corey Thomas crosses center. Tried to dump it in. He got knocked down, so he couldn't quite nudge, uh, dump it in. But the Grizzlies nudge it deep in the stillhead zone in the far corner. 
as Idaho leads 2-1 to one out to A.J. White, who will move it ahead as Kawaguchi gets to Grizzlies territory and dumps it in from neutral ice as Thomas, behind the net, collides with a stillhead. He glides towards the near corner. Grizzlies playing with outstanding effort tonight as Idaho to the right side. Murphy falls down. Grizzlies get it. Dylan fits across the center ice. Fitz gains the line and stops in the right point. As he rolled around, Jamison couldn't reach it. Neither could Wells. It glides towards the near corner or on the floor of the far corner from what we're watching as Idaho will chip it out in front of their net. Now they'll lift it in the air. It goes to center ice. Puck on its side as it wobbles back and forth. Grizzlies, Connor McDonald chases after it, and the whistle blows as icing is called on Idaho with 13-17 left in the third. Certainly interesting action here in the first seven minutes of the third. It has been interesting. It's been fun, fast-paced, but most importantly, it's been in the favor of the Grizzlies. Grizzlies really, I mean, <laughs> they've done exactly what we said that they needed to do. They've established a strong forecheck, found their way into the Idaho zone more often than they've played in their own zone. Grizzlies really dictating the terms here. Right, we'll take the draw. He's got Messner and Martell out there as Utah wins the draw. Mayhew on the right side. Kyle Mayhew in his pro debut has already got an assist. The puck around the boards. Messner over to the left corner. Messner feeds it up top as Aaron Tho left side. Shot, saved by Wells. Rebound goes to Kawaguchi. He'll ship it out to center ice as Wade Murphy will drop it back off for Kawaguchi as he'll skate back into his own end. Kawaguchi will tap it off the near glass. It flies high into the air. And it's gathered by A.J. White at center ice. He collides along the boards with a Grizzly as Mester looks like he plays a physical game. Grizzlies cross center ice, and they'll chip it in. As Idaho around the net will tap it off the near glass. Franklin in the area, still moving out to center ice. Kawaguchi couldn't locate it as Mayhew will throw it back to Thos in the Grizzly zone. He'll steer it to the Utah blue line as he'll glide it across. Mayhew gets it to the right side, drops it off for right. Right over to Mayhew out in front. Oh, Mayhew couldn't handle the pass. Those guys were college teammates at Denver last year. Though, so, over to the right side, takes the lefty shot, saved by Wells. He holds on, 12-20s left in the third period. It's been a very spirited hockey game. Both teams are looking outstanding, but Idaho still leads 2-1. to one. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club. Idaho still leads 2-1, to one, but guy, the Grizzlies really are doing what they want to do offensively. It looks like they're moving the puck well. The passing's been crisp. Done everything but score a goal here. Yeah, Tyson, and it starts in the face-off circle. I can't give you an exact figure, but it seems like the Grizzlies, more often than not, are winning face-offs, especially in the Idaho zone. You talked about Cameron Wright winning face-offs, moving towards that center position, really taking those draws. Well, he's done a good job of winning them. And as a result, the Grizzlies are having possession here in the third period. 12 minutes, 20 seconds left in the third. Idaho leads Utah 2-1. to one. Draws the near side as Tyler Penner will take it. He wins it. Sure across to Martin. Luke Martin was all league, was all rookie last season. As Sure kicks to the right corner. It's taken away by Owen Hedrick. We'll skate around Idaho's net. He'll feed it to the far corner. Now Penner pokes it back towards the left circle. Grizzlies get it. Fies with a shot. Not glanced off a stick and goes towards the right side as Idaho got a stick in the way and did a good job with it. Pfizer will race after it. Back in the Grizzly zone, he'll get the puck. He turns it over. Pfizer gets it back as Franklin couldn't gather it. Pfizer throws to the far side as Grizzly skating from left to right here in the third period as Luke Martin will steer it out to center ice, pass ahead. Utah's Cutler couldn't reach it as Idaho back behind their net. It's a stillheads two and the Grizzlies one, 11 and a half minutes left in regulation. Idaho gets it to the near side as they cross center ice left wing and chip it in. As Miner plays it behind his net, he'll get to Sure back to power. Glanced off his skate as Idaho skates towards their left. Martin pokes it out to center ice. As Idaho back in their own end, as Grizzlies get it around the goaltender Wells, and somehow the puck poked back towards the far side as Power was chasing after it, looking for a second goal of the season. Idaho moves to center ice as McDonald stops at the center ice logo and dumps it in. Still has to make a line change. Show to the Grizzlies. 
As Idaho banked to the left side, 11 minutes and counting left in regulation. As Idaho gets to Jade Miller, he couldn't get around McDonald, who has a bounce off his skate, goes back to center ice. Idaho chases it back in their own end as he still has a reset. Neither team has scored since late in the first period when Haskin got a second of the game, although it looked like Franklin was the, the one that nudged it in. As the Arizona State product, Kuzmansis dumps it in, siring pass shot, saved by Miner. Well, it looks like Kumansis, of the Arizona State product, displayed good speed, got around Connor McDonald. He dumped it to the corner, got it, centered it to Niram, and Niram with a pretty nifty shot, but Miner was able to casually make a nice save on it. Looks like Trent's got his A game here tonight. Trent is on his A game, Tyson. He's got the three C's, calm, cool, and collected. Just, he just, just sticks his hand out there and snares the puck. What a tricky shot, but Trent Miner was on it. He's been great all game long. 10.38 left in the, fir- in the third, still Idaho leading 2-1. As Jordan Martell gets it. Martell's got a breakaway. Martell skates in, backhand shot, and it goes over the crossbar. Missed an opportunity for the Grizzlies. As Idaho around to the near side, it's still 2-1. to one. Still has move ahead. Kawaguchi gains center ice. As he'll chip it to the right corner. He tries to get around Mayhew. Kawaguchi gets around Mayhew. Now he gets hit by another Grizzly. Throw in the area. As it goes to Messner, back to Thoe. Thoe will carry it out to center ice. He'll skate down the middle. Now Thoe will veer off to the right. I fires towards the net. It got redirected by register stick and glides towards Dylan Wells, who covers up as whistle blows. 27 shots to the Grizzlies to Idaho's 23. There's Jared Pike, the Grizzlies assistant coach, getting some water. Pike in his first season as assistant coach. I wonder if they've confused Jared Pike with Ryan Kanasiewicz. <laughs> that might be why they're showing Pike. Here, they're, they're hey, talking Pike about the San Utah native. Good to see Jared Pike getting some air time. As Grizzlies win the draw, they enter from the left side. They skate towards the circle. Lefty shot goes wide, and it glides out of play off the protective netting. But Utah had a pretty good look there, and I believe that was Brandon Cutler maybe that had a good look from the left side, but just couldn't find the back of the net. And, boy, about a minute ago, Jordan Martell with a breakaway off a faceoff, and you know he ended up missing wide as well. Grizzlies are getting those opportunities. Can they find a way to capitalize on one of them to tie the game? Penner will take the draw to the far side as – Penner in his second year with the Grizzlies. Out of Col- Colgate, Utah wins the draw. Martin gets it to the left side. Grizzlies chip it to the right corner as Pfizer gathers the puck. As he gets blasted by Casey Johnson, Pfizer looks to center. It's cut off by Dylan Wells at the near goal line. As well as the Idaho goaltender holds on. 9.48 left in the third. We'll take one final timeout here in regulation as Idaho leads 2-1. to one. On the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. And we got a barn burner over at Idaho Central Arena as the Stillheads lead 2-1. to one. No one scored since Cody Haskin in 17-57 into the first, although we think Zane Franklin was the one that nudged it out in front of the net, but they've given it to Haskin and Ezra right now, which would be his second goal of the game. Grizzlies have outshot the Stillheads 7-4 to four in the third period and 28-23 to 23 for the contest. It looks like we've had ourselves a fun one. 9.48 left in the third as Utah wins the draw. They're in the offensive zone, sure, around the net. As Luke Martin skates towards the corner, Martin back for a second stint with the club. As Penner chases after, Idaho back checks and takes it away. As he'll move it ahead to Justin Misiak, who gains center ice. Misiak's good speed. Is, he's got good speed. As he'll dump it to the right corner. Grizzlies chasing after it as Utah gets the puck. As Grizz gets to Pfizer, who tried to get it off the boards. Now Pfizer moves ahead to Penner. Penner over towards Cutler. The pass was too hot for him to handle as it glides towards the far corner. As Casey Johnson moves it ahead. Idaho couldn't reach it, and it looks like it's going to be icing on the stillheads. The whistle blows with nine minutes and 12 seconds left in the third. 
Thanks to everybody for sticking with us on YouTube. Unfortunately, these remote broadcasts can be pretty difficult to describe sometimes. So thanks for sticking with us here through the road games this season as it's the next to last road game of the regular year. Idaho playing for a lot of league records as a victory tonight would mean the Steelheads would break the league record for most home wins in a season. They also need eight points for the most points in league history in a regular season and they need four wins in their final six games to break a league record for most wins in the regular year grizzlies in the offense is on once again as they win the face off martel skates towards the near corner he gets hit mick messner in his pro debut wearing number 25 as he'll skate towards the right side he'll drop it out for throw feeds it to the slot from right it has a right has a bounce off his stick messner collides with johnson and carrying out of the zone is wade murphy he crosses center ice and he dumps it in as Miner behind his net will play it and he'll give it to Aaron Thos out there with Kyle Mayhew, who's in his professional debut. Mayhew played at the University of Denver for the last five years. As behind his net is Aaron Tho. Now throw it to Mayhew on the far side, who will glide it out. It got picked off as Mayhew was looking for Martell. Idaho spins it to the near side. Power in the areas. They get it up top for Cudla. Cudla left circle, lefty shot. It's blocked by Jamison. Now Idaho will nudge it up top and it's taken away as Martell was the only guy in the area. Idaho didn't have anybody in front of the net. Grizzlies enter as power left side. Lefty shot goes wide. Power got hit just after taking the shot. Martell skates towards the right circle and loses the puck because the puck glides towards the slot. And Idaho gets it and carries it out to center ice. They cross the red line and dump it in as Miner will throw it back to the far side as Utah gets hit in the area is Willie Nurem and make that Jack Becker and Jade Miller as Grizzlies Dylan Fitz right wing cross the center ice. So bouncing off the steelhead. Now Utah will move it ahead as it goes to the Idaho blue line, but it's Owen Hedrick for Idaho in the right place as he'll throw it to the right side. Idaho enters the zone. Justin Ducharme at the right point will nudge it across as it goes to the far circle. Grizzlies moving out to center ice. Idaho gets it back. Demowski enters from the right side and he'll dump it to the corners. He tried to get around to skater. Corey Thomas did a good job cutting off his pursuit as it glides towards the near side as Cutler will move it ahead. Now it gets kicked back to Cutler. He'll throw it across to Connor McDonald, and the captain will slice it out to center ice, and the Grizzlies dump it in as it glides towards the slot. Dylan Fitz will stop it over in the near side at the goal line, and the Steelheads will move it ahead as Idaho crosses center ice. Bice will carry it to the Utah blue line. Now he dumps it in as it goes back to Pfizer on the near side. Less than seven minutes left in regulation. It's still 2-1 Idaho. Pfizer across to Shearer. Blue line to blue line. Pass is picked off. As Idaho gets it ahead. Stillhead's gained the line and dumping in from the right point. Martin chases after it. He collides with the Stillhead. He goes to Penner, who's looking for Shearer to skate to the corner, and he didn't. Idaho on the right side will drop it up for the point. Back to the corner as Idaho will get as Shearer delivers a hit on Idaho. Now Martin gets delivers a shot as Puck goes back to the far corner. Kawaguchi skates over there. He gets it. It glanced off a of Grizzly. Now, Willie Nearham behind the net will skate towards the near side. He'll tap it off the boards, and it goes to Kuzmensis, and he'll glide it around as Idaho to the far side. They're back in the corner, battling with Shearer. White fires towards the net, and it goes wide. Now, the Grizzlies to the near side get hit as Martin goes down. Puck kicks towards the slot. Grizzlies throw up back towards the near wing boards. As Kuzmensis in the right, in the left point spins it around. Kawaguchi over in the corner, throws it back as Idaho delivers a hit on Penner, who keeps his feet. Penner gets up at the puck spin in the Grizzlies zone for a minute and a half as he'll throw it to Pfizer. Now across the Grizzlies get it. They'll cross center ice and dump it in. And I think that's Brandon Cutler as Idaho gets it in their own zone, skating from right to left. Five and a half minutes left in the third. Idaho gains center ice. Kuzmansis dumps it in. As Tho delivers a big hit behind Utah's net. As Domowski over in the corner loses his balance. Tho moves it ahead to Martell. Martell gets it. He gets around Johnson. Martell left circle. Backhand shot goes wide. As Grizzlies lose over along the near boards. As Idaho gets it two on one. Still had to skate to the right circle. Makes a nice move around a skater. Centering pass out in front. Goes past Jack Becker. As Idaho or Utah. Tho gets to Messner. Now across to... Mayhew, I tried to drop it back off for Messner, and uh, it looked like Mayhew lost the puck, and Idaho clears it out. Less than five minutes left in the third. Idaho leads 2-1. to one. Grizzlies will throw it ahead, but Utah is offside, says the linesman. As the whistle blows, draw is going to come back to neutralize, and it's really been an interesting battle. As Grizz scored first tonight, 
Jordan Martel, 10-43 into the contest, scored with Kyle Mayhew and Mick Messner gained the assist. And for Mayhew and Messner, it's their first professional point as they're playing their professional debuts tonight. Cody Haskin and tied it up 14-32 in with Kamatsis and Miller gained the assist. And then Haskin and got a second of the game according to the box score, 17-57 in with Franklin and Jade Miller gained the assist. So Miller has two assists this evening. It's been an interesting goaltending matchup as Dylan Wells is making his Idaho debut. Wells played in 20 AHL games earlier this season, and he has stopped 29 of 30. Trent Miner for the Grizzlies has saved 23 or 21 of 23 as Utah has outshot Idaho 30 to 23, and they have a nine to four edge in the third period. And guy, the Grizzlies are getting the offense's own time they want. They just haven't found a way to put the puck in the back of the net. Yeah, Tyson, I mean, it's going to come right down to the wire. It's just a one-goal game, but the Grizzlies pushing the narrative in the offensive zone just can't find a way to put a putt, not another puck past Wells. Uh, they got a little bit of time to do it, but they got to up the ante, uh, have a little sense of urgency here. Tight game, but the Grizzlies need to get the next one. Uh, they've been working on neutral ice quite a bit. There were some other at times in the game where it looked like they were working on some ice. Earlier in the year when the Grizzlies were there, there was an ice compressor that uh, was broken, and so the ice just was a little bit warm. Normally the ice is pretty good there, but it looks like it's a little bit choppy and slow here tonight. Yeah, it seems that way, but, I mean, the weird thing is, is that both teams are really moving with the puck with speed, not really slowed down by a whole lot. So uh, it's, it's kind of strange that with all the work that they've done on the ice, the puck has been moving quite freely. We'll see if the Grizzlies can find a way to tie it up. They've had some good looks over the last – couple periods they just haven't found, found a way to get one past Dylan Wells draws give me in the Grizzlies zone in the far side as Ty Pelton Bice will take it against Keaton Jamison Jamison the workhorse for the Grizzlies has 14 goals and 20 assists this season he's got a point in six straight games but that's on the line as he's been scoreless here so far this evening Grizzlies win the draw they'll carry it out to center ice and Idaho gets it back and dumps it in as minor behind his net Gets it for the near side as Utah moves it ahead. Grizzlies will cross center. Fitz chases after it. Cutlet, the Idaho blue line, moves ahead two on one. Idaho skates towards the right circle. Franklin toe drag shot saved by Miner. Great defensive play by Connor McDonald, who saves the day for Utah. As Grizz lifted out to center ice, now goes back to Idaho. They cross center ice. They'll feed it towards the slot. Skating ends tie Pelton Bice will glide towards the left circle. Take a shot, and it's blocked by McDonald. Now puck goes back to Haskin, and we'll tap it off the end boards as it's off the jack-in-the-box sign. We need to get jack-in-the-box here in Utah as Bice tried to nudge it towards Hedrick, and Power got a stick in the way as it hangs along the far boards. Fitz clears it out, and Idaho chases after it, and Scott DeBaugh will reach back and raise his right arm as icing is on the Grizzlies. Scott DeBaugh, one of the best linesmen in the league, as the draw is going to come back towards Trent Miner with 354 left in the third. Seems like Grizzlies are doing a decent job on those battles along the boards. Yeah, they are, Tyson. It's just those little things, those battles along the boards, those races to the puck. The Grizzlies have been winning those more often than not throughout the course of this game, which is why they have the shot edge and they also have the edge in terms of possession. question is, though, is can the Grizzlies get that next goal? Idaho wins the drop as actions in the Grizzlies zone as Kawaguchi throws it around the net. As goes to the far side, power battling as Idaho behind the net. Kalaguchi centers out in front. Right, White with a shot saved by Miner. Well, A.J. White had a good look out in front. Miner's been a brick wall here the last couple periods. As McDonald will tap it off an Idaho stick. It goes to center ice. Kalaguchi across the blue line, and he'll dump it in as McDonald chases after it. He'll glide it towards the near side. McDonald and Pfizer battle in the corner with an Idaho still head, and Pfizer gets it. As Pfizer will get to neutralize, he'll feed it across. Grizzly skate towards the left circle. Mesner with a shot, saved by Wells. Puck goes back to the right wing. Righty shot, saved by Wells again. That was taken by Tyler Penner. Now around the net, Pfizer gets over to Luke Martin. Right wing shot goes wide, and the puck kicks towards the slot. Bounces off of Kalaguchi. Pfizer over to the slot, trying to get to, Ma to Martin, and it's picked off by Idaho. Cross center ice, and they'll lift it in. Less than three minutes left in regulation. Idaho still leads 2-1. to one. Grizzlies cross center. They'll chip it towards the slot. Penner couldn't get there as Idaho clears it back out. As Luke Martin back at the Utah blue line, will throw a blue line to blue line pass to Pfizer. Pfizer skates towards his left. He'll throw it to Cutler. His shot's blocked. Now left wing. Grizzlies fire towards the net, and it goes wide. Idaho out to the right side. We'll clear it out to center. As skating to the bench slowly is Justin Mesiak, who blocked a shot. 
225 and counting left in the third. Miner's still in there for Utah. As Grizzlies cross center, Martin gets tripped up. No call as Martell will throw up back to the Grizzlies zone as Utah trying to enter with momentum. Grizzlies throw a blue line to blue line pass. He goes past Cameron Wright and goes deep in the stillhead zone as Wells will throw it to the near side for Johnson who moves ahead to Demowski, who gets it and throws to center ice. Bounced off of Mayhew. Now it goes back to Utah. Skates around Idaho as they enter the zone from the left side. Grizzlies center it. Left wing shot. Saved by Wells. Idaho will lift it out to center ice. It goes into the bench area. No delay of game as it would have hit off the glass had there been glass there. 150 is left in regulation. It's Idaho 2 and the Grizzlies 1. And I got to imagine this is about the time when Trent Miner will exit all. I wonder, you know, where's the faceoff going to be? And it looks like it's going to be in the stillhead zone. I think the Grizzlies might be pulling Miner for the extra skater. I yeah, have to imagine that that is going to be coming soon if it hasn't already happened. Oh, it looks like it hasn't happened. Trent Miner's still in net, but I have to imagine that Coach Knastovich is going to pull him pretty soon. Utah's outshot Idaho 11-6 to in the third period. Grizzlies had a 14-5 to edge in the second frame. It's still the Stillheads 2 and Utah 1. And it looks like Ryan Knastovich might use his one timeout as Grizzlies will skate towards their bench, and so will Trent Miner. As Knastovich will get the clipboard out, and he'll drop a play to see if he can tie this one up. As Trent Miner has done a good job, will glide towards the bench, and Idaho will go convene with head coach Everett Sheen, who's got to be a favorite for the league's coach of the year as the Stillheads missed the playoffs last year as they only won 10 road games, and they've been solid on the road with a record of 23-6-1-2, but at home, a victory for the Stillheads tonight would be a new league record for home wins in a regular season. As Dylan Wells and his... Idaho debut talking with the backup goaltender, Adam Scheel. As Idaho talking things over, Jade Miller certainly been a good two-way forward. He's talking it up with Zane Franklin. It's going to be interesting to see if the Grizzlies can isolate, you know, either Pfizer or Wright on one side and see if they can find a way to get some grade-A chance. That might do the trick, Tyson. I think the Grizzlies, first and foremost, need to win the faceoff. But then you're right. Can they find a way to draw the steelheads towards one side? And then you're right, isolate maybe Pfizer or... Or right, I would even be fine with Martin taking that shot. It doesn't matter who you isolate. you got to find that one guy to take that shot, and that might be all it takes. Looks like Miner. He's looking towards Kanasiewicz, and Miner will exit. Six on five. Utah's net is empty. 150 left in regulation. Jamison will take the draw for Utah. For Idaho, I think that's, I think that's Jade Miller who's taking the draw for them. As the draw's over in the near circle. And it's won by, well, it gets kicked over to the left point. Idaho, Zane Franklin takes away from Martin. Now the still at skate towards the blue line. Myron, uh, uh, and, uh, Jade Miller fires towards the empty net and it goes wide. Now it goes to the near side. Grizzlies get it as Brandon Cutler will skate down the middle. He's still in the Grizzlies zone. Now to neutralize. He crosses the center. Right wing pass to right. Wright gets around Miller. As right over in the corner, spins it back around to Cutler behind the net. He battles with Hedrick. Now to the far side, Martell in the area. Puck glides towards the right side. Martin cuts it off from the point. He'll throw it to the high slot for Pfizer. Back to right in the right side. Right dances around. 112 left. Over to Martin. One-timer, and he scores! Grizzlies tied up! Luke Martin fired towards the net. And I don't know, it got redirected. Everybody's hugging Luke Martin. And welcome back to the club. He had 10 goals last season. And for Luke, it's his ninth goal of the season. As Luke Martin high-fives everybody on the Grizzlies bench. As Utah finds a way with 110 left in regulation. As Wright was over to the right side. Nudged up top for Martin with a one-timer. And it looked like he got it clean. There's absolutely no quit in this Grizzlies team, Tyson. Clock is winding down. You give the puck to Martin. An absolute bomb from the blue line. I'm not sure anybody in this league would have stopped that shot. Grizzlies somehow find a way to tie it up in the waning moments. Martin, the St. Louis native, ties it up at two. As Martin is Trent Miners in net now. Idaho gets it. They get to the left side. Kawaguchi toe drag shot. And it goes wide as looks like it goes out of play. Kawaguchi, a good look from the left side after Idaho won the faceoff. And even one minute is left in regulations. The clock gets stopped as Kawaguchi, well, it looked like it was a tough angle. And he tried to put a good move on Trent Miner and ends up missing wide. Draw's going to be in the Grizzlies zone. Well, Utah looking for any standing point they can get. And Utah's three and five at Idaho Central Arena this season. Idaho's only lost at home four times this year, and three of them have been to the hands of the Grizzlies. 
As the draw won by Idaho, over to the near side as Luke Martin tied it up as he scored from the high slot. Grizzlies get it. Dylan Fitz moves out to center ice. It goes to Idaho as chasing after it's Pfizer, but Register gets there. He'll move it to center ice as Idaho dumps it towards Miner. Miner in front of the crease dives and covers up as we'll get a whistle on the Grizzlies. So 41.9 seconds left in the third. Draw is going to be back towards Trent Miner. And the Grizzlies really going to have to do a job here in the last 41 seconds to at least maintain a tie game going into overtime. Yeah, I have to imagine the Steelheads don't want to let the Grizzlies win their biggest rivals. I think they'd be sick to their stomach if the Grizzlies came away with a standing point or even two. Steelheads are going to make a push here. Grizzlies need to be ready. Martin scored the goal with right and Pfizer getting the assist. 1850 into the third period. Draw one by the Grizzlies. It's Taron Pfizer to the near side. Lifts it in the air. It's gathered by Idaho at center ice. As Kesey Johnson will throw it towards the far wing boards. Puck now at neutral ice as Utah battles as Cutler in the area. As the puck stays along the boards, Grizzlies come out of the pile. As Sure throws it back to McDonald who couldn't reach it. And the Grizzlies captain will get it off the boards. Looking for Pfizer. Goes wide of him. As Idaho at new tries enters the zone from the left as Willie Neerham will skate towards the near goal line. Uh, Chip a sharp angled shot that goes over Miner's shoulder as eight seconds left in regulation. Puck glides off the near boards. Grizzlies will float it out to center. And it looks like we're going to have overtime at Idaho Central Arena as Luke Martin in his first game back in a Grizzlies uniform. He was part of the best defensive pairing in the league last season. And he's back and he's made his presence with authority as he has announced it with authority scoring 110 with 110 left in regulation Utah's net was empty Cameron Wright and Taron Pfizer picked up the assist and the Grizzlies come away with at least one big standing point tonight can they get that extra standing point that'd certainly be critical but win or lose the Grizzlies are not going to come away empty-handed and it's the stick of Luke Martin that gets the job done for the Grizzlies. I'll tell you what, Tyson, the Grizzlies certainly earned that point, whether it becomes two standing points or that one loser point. Regardless, the Grizzlies absolutely gutted this thing out and found a way to earn that standing point. Draw is going to be at center ice to start overtime. I imagine Luke Martin's going to be a big part of that. James Sure as well. We'll see a lot of Cameron Wright and Terran Pfizer, you know, guys like that. You know, for Idaho. Uh, they've played a few games past regulation. It looks like they played seven games past regulation this season. This would be the eighth. And for the Grizzlies, the last time they played past regulation was on March 17th in Allen, where they won two to one in a shootout. Dylan Wells has been good in net, but he allowed that game tying goal to Luke Martin. There was a lot of traffic out in front, and I'm not sure Wells had great vision on it. As it looks like starting overtime, it's going to be. Ty Pelton, Bice, Justin Mesiak, and Cody Haskin, and that's the three for Idaho. For Utah, it's going to be Kyle Mayhew, that's the defenseman, Jordan Martell, and Cameron Wright are the two forwards. Wright will take the face off against Ty Pelton, Bice. Grizzlies will be skating from right to left as we see it on Flow Sports. Idaho from left to right. Drought goes past Haskin and as it goes into the stillhead zone. Haskin, a one on one battle with Wright. And coming up with it's another stillhead, and it's, it's Mesiak. He'll cross center ice with good speed. Mesiak gets around Jordan Martell. He'll skate down the middle. He'll take a lefty shot, and it goes wide as he was skating down as Haskin with a shot. Rebound, shot, and a score. And Idaho wins 20 seconds into overtime as Cody Haskin took the shot from the slot. It bounced off a minor, and Ty pelton Bice gets the rebound. And the Idaho stillheads have set a new league record as they get their 31st victory at home, as everybody goes to congratulate Ty pelton Bice, who now has a point in seven straight games. And the Stillheads get a 3-2 to two victory in the series opener. Well, it didn't take long for the offer Idaho to get into the offensive zone and do something with it, as the first shift of overtime has netted. The game winner is Idaho, as we mentioned, has now set a league record it was previously set by the Cincinnati Cyclones back in the 2018-2019 season. Utah did go 1-0 at Cincinnati that particular year, winning in shootout in a shootout 5-4. Well, tough one here for the Grizzlies, and they put, they come away with a standing point, but just missed on that second one. As Mesiak took the shot, he was falling down, and then they got the puck to Haskin in the slot. Didn't even look like it got to minor. It might have gotten blocked before it got to minor. And, you know, the, let's see, the Hayes getting shot. That might have been blocked by Mayhew and just kicked towards the right side, and Pelton Bice was all alone to put it in the back of the net. It's a tough goal, Tyson. It's tough to see the Grizzlies lose, especially considering the way they rallied back to tie this game and really 
just found a way to hang in there with the best team in the league and the Idaho Steelheads. I'm not sure if Miner got a piece of that or not, if it was blocked out in front. Hard to tell from our vantage point on the Flow Sports feed, but nonetheless, it's just a juicy rebound out in front, and the Steelheads capitalized on it. But the Grizzlies at least get a standing point, and that's big in terms of the playoff race. Final score, Idaho 3, Utah 2. Postgame show starts in one minute as Idaho is now 31-4 and four at home this season. For the Grizzlies, they come away with a standing point. Their record is now 32-31-4. and four. They have 68 standings points. We'll talk about where the Grizzlies reside now in the playoff picture when we come back, as they did get a standing point tonight, but it's Idaho winning 3-2 to two as Ty Pelton Bice got the game winner in his 18th goal of the season with Haskin and Amesiak getting the assists. Postgame shows coming up next on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Final score over at Idaho Central Arena. The Stillheads defeat the Grizzlies 3-2 to in overtime as Idaho picks up their 31st home victory of the season. It's a new league record as the previous record was set by the Cincinnati Cyclones who won 30 home games in the 2018-2019 season. Grizzlies did score first tonight as Jordan Martell got his 15th of the year. He now has a goal in five straight games. Kyle Mayhew and Mick Messner picked up the assist. And for Mayhew and Messner, both guys playing in their first professional games. They picked up their first professional point as Utah took a 1-0 lead, 10-43 into the first. Cody Haskinen found the back of the net, 14-32 in as Demetrius Kamansis and Jade Miller picked up the assists. They say that Haskinen got the goal, 17-57 in to give Idaho a 2-1 lead. It looked like Zane Franklin had redirected it. Franklin skated to the bench first as if he redirected it. They say Franklin didn't get a piece of it, which would certainly kind of make for an odd goal by Haskinen, which would be his second of the game and fifth of the season. Franklin and Jade Miller picked up the assist. Miller had the assist on each of Idaho's two first period goals. And the Stillheads led two to one after 20 minutes of play as Idaho outshot Utah 14 to seven in the first. Nobody scored in the second period, and it looked like for a while nobody was going to score in the third period either. Utah pulled Trent Miner for the extra attacker, and the Grizzlies were able to win the faceoff. Cameron Wright was over on the right side. He nudged it to the high slot for Luke Martin, and Martin picked up his ninth goal of the season. As There was some action out in front, but nobody redirected it. It was a blast from Luke Martin, who had 10 goals in 53 games last season. And good and welcome back to Utah. As Martin spent 28 games in the AHL with the Colorado Eagles, he had one goal and eight assists and a plus-eight rating. And Luke Martin looked like he was as good as he'd ever been. And he was an all-star in the, league, in the league this year with the Jacksonville Icemen. And he scored eight goals in 25 games for them. And he picked up his ninth goal, 1850, into the third period. Cameron Wright and Taron Pfizer picked up the assist. Idaho had a couple shots there in the final minute of regulation, but they were stopped by Trent Minor, or in the case of Kawaguchi, just missed wide. And then we went to overtime. And in the first shift of overtime, Idaho got in the attack zone. Justin Mesiak. At the first shot, he got knocked down out in front of Trent Miner. And then the Stillheads, about five, you know, three or four seconds after that, regrouped, got it to Haskin. And, and then diving in front of Trent Miner, looked like it was Kyle Mayhew. And it's hard to say whether Puck bounced off the Mayhew or if it bounced off the Miner. But either way, the Puck bounced off of something, kicked towards the right circle, and Ty Pel- Pelton Bice was all alone, got the rebound. And and because Miner looked like he was playing out in front of the crease, you know, when Pelton Bice got it, he essentially had an open net and just fired away. And it was all she wrote as Idaho picks up the extra standing point as Pelton Bice extends his point scoring streak to eight games 
I think it was a seven-game streak coming into play. He gets his 19th goal of the season. Haskin and Amesiak with the assists. And, you know, you, you, for the Grizzlies, you don't want to use that term, you know, moral victory. You know, you, at least you got a standing point. But considering that the Grizzlies are in a tight playoff race that could come down to the final day of the regular season, this isn't nothing for Utah. As earlier today, Allen lost in overtime to Savannah 6-5. to five. And Wichita defeated Tulsa three to one. So as we sit right now, the Grizzlies are in a tie for third place in the Mountain Division with Kansas City and Wichita. And I imagine the Grizzlies will have the tiebreaker against both of those clubs. But Allen picking up one standing point now has 69 on the season. They're in second place. Idaho's already clinched the one seed, and Allen's in second right now. And we got a log jam for third place as Kansas City, Wichita, and Utah. Each have 68 standings points, and Ida and Rapid City is three points behind that tie for third as Rapid City is now in sixth place. And so despite the loss, it looked like the Grizzlies could have come away with nothing, and then Luke Martin saved the day with a minute left, tied it up, and then Idaho picked up the extra standing point. And so even though it's a frustrating loss, uh, the Grizzlies did come away with a standing point. And you think about this playoff race being as tight as it is, that one point can end up making the difference between the Grizzlies either getting a, a better playoff spot, a, bl- a better playoff positioning, or it could just be that that one point can make the difference between the Grizzlies getting into the playoffs altogether. So it is a loss, you know, three to two, but the Grizzlies don't come away empty-handed. I guess only time will tell as to what that one point will mean, but a point is a point, and I really feel like, I mean, you've mentioned this before, right? that, you know, it's a loser point. You know, you didn't win. I mean, you still get a point, but I really feel like the Grizzlies in this game for maybe two thirds of this game outplayed the steelheads. Uh, you know, the play was in the steelhead zone for a lot of the second and third periods. The Grizzlies were just doing everything, just trying to pound the puck at the goal. And they just couldn't buy a goal until you get that blast from the past. Luke Martin bringing back shades of the 21, 22 Grizzlies fires at home and sends the Grizzlies to overtime. And so the Grizzlies, while they do lose, they do pick up that one point. And so we'll see what that means, but uh, at least in a game where the Grizzlies dictated the terms for the most part, they don't come away with nothing. It was interesting to see the two guys making their pro debuts. I mean, Luke Martin looked like he's as good, you know, he played as well as he'd ever played. But Kyle Mayhew and Mick Messner uh, it looked like Messner fit right into the Grizzlies' second forward line with Cameron Wright and Jordan Martell. And he's not a very big guy, but it looks like Kyle Mayhew moves around pretty well and makes good decisions with the puck. And I was really impressed with both guys tonight. I was too, Tyson. I, I mean, we knew what we were getting with Luke Martin, but the question coming into this game was how will Mesner perform and how will Mayhew perform? Well, these guys can play. These yeah. guys are good, and I think they're solid additions to this Grizzlies lineup. I, I look at Mesner in particular. I mean, this guy in his first game with the Grizzlies had an assist and three shots on goal. I mean, this guy was not scared at all to shoot the puck on net. He was making plays, slotted into the lineup very nicely. And I think about Mayhew... He also had an assist, only had one shot on goal, but this was a guy that was just zipping through the neutral zone. Man, what a guy with a bunch of speed. I mean, he's not the very he's, I mean, he's not the biggest guy in the world at 5'8". I mean, I'm 5'8", easy for me to say, but I mean, it's like he's, oh my. He, he moves around <laughs> with a lot of speed. Great player, and uh, I, I like the way that these Grizzlies are shaping up. Uh, I think they're solid additions to the team. Yeah, I'm also 5'8", and that's if uh, I'm on – it's if I got like five different pairs of socks. Uh, it'd be five eight. To, it's, we're just un, it's unfortunate that we got the uh, short end of the stick, but it, I guess it is what it is. Uh, Martin ended up leading the Grizzlies with five shots. Cameron Wright and Brandon Cutler each had four. Uh, Mick Messner, who according to the box score, still Vladislav Mikalchuk. Uh, unfortunately, Mikalchuk got released a couple of days ago, and and uh, Messner is now wearing number twenty five. Uh, the box score didn't make that change of names. You know, both guys' last name starts with an M. Uh, but it's interesting to see. You know, Dylan fits with three shots. He had a couple of good looks. Uh, Messner, Martell, Tho had three shots. Uh, really, th- I think the thing for the Grizzlies, you know, they had to play a smart game and they had to play well to stay toe on toe to toe with the Stillheads. I think we like the last two periods. The Grizzlies really dominated the shot count, 14 to five in the second period and 12 to eight in the third. But it really felt like the Grizzlies dictated the action in the last two periods. And and considering that there are some big games later on with the Stillheads, you know, Friday in Boise and Saturday uh, at Maverick Center, I think the Grizzlies have to really like the way they performed in the last two periods. 
I agree. I mean, <laughs> you want to talk about the Grizzlies in the second and third period. I mean, they were really just pushing the narrative, and that was just Grizzlies hockey at its finest. They were just I mean, you're right. They were dictating the terms. I really feel like if the Grizzlies had that same jump that they had in the second and third periods in the first period, I think the Grizzlies win this in regulation. I don't, I'm not so sure Idaho gets those two goals in the first period if the Grizzlies are playing as well as they did in the second and third. But, I mean, that's a what if. You know, and the Grizzlies did not win the game. They lost. So uh, I think this game, though, I mean, you think about the Steelheads. Historic, historically good team. Crazy. Now, what, 111 points with this win here yep. tonight? I mean, that's just... That's just insane. And you think about the way the Grizzlies came out and played them here tonight. I mean, you think these two teams were neck and neck in the standings with the way that this game was played. And so I think that speaks a lot about this Grizzlies team. I've said it before, and I'll say it here again. If I'm the Steelheads, I don't want to face the Grizzlies in the first round because the Grizzlies know this team inside and out. The Grizzlies are a better team now than they were back when they saw the Steelheads in January in the earlier parts of the season. Uh, the Grizzlies know how the Steelheads work. They went toe-to-toe with them here. I think that would be a tough first round matchup for the Idaho Steelheads. So I think the Grizzlies proved a lot here against the best team in the league. You know, Idaho's 31 and four at home, but, you know, three of those four losses have come to the hands of the Grizzlies. And Utah is 2 1 and 1 in their last four games against the Steelheads. And obviously, they haven't seen each other before tonight since Martin Luther King Day. But, you know, the Grizzlies have performed well at times against the Steelheads this year. They're going to need a good effort on Friday. Luckily, both teams will have tomorrow off. I don't know if either team's going to get a practice in. And considering I, I don't, I wouldn't even watch it. You know, I don't get, I don't, I don't really care whether they practice tomorrow. But it will be interesting to see what happens on Friday, as we'll see if Trent Miners and net the backup this evening was Garrett Metcalf. So you know, Metcalf's had some success against Idaho this year, but maybe, uh, maybe Ryan Kanasevich goes with him. And really, Dylan Wells looked good in his. Still heads debut coming over from the AHL and, you know, it could be either be him or Adam Schill and Ned on Friday. Let's see if we can get to the three stars of the game. This box. Let's see. The box score has got a few errors on it. So let's see if they actually have them posted. And it looks like the three stars of the game are listed as the still heads are all three recipients of the three stars as Dylan Wells is the third star. He's not 31 of 33. The number two star is Cody Haskinen who ended the night with two goals and one assist and a plus three rating. Number one star is Ty Pelton Bikes, who had one shot this evening, and it turned out to be the game winner 20 seconds into overtime. So Ty Pelton Bice is the number one star of the game. If we're going to do a Grizzlies version of three stars, you know, Luke Martin getting the tying goal with 110 left in regulation, certainly be up there. Uh, Jordan Martel now has a goal in five straight games. I'd probably give him a star tonight and i thought trent minor hung in there you know they showed a replay of that shot in overtime it looked like my it was minor that got a piece of it and miss mayhew uh, then ended up kicking over to pelton bice who got the game winner but it just a you know, unfortunate break for the grizzlies there 20 seconds into overtime but as guy and i mentioned the grizzlies didn't come away completely empty-handed because luke martin was able to score with 110 left in regulation i gotta think that it's going to be every aspect of the game where Luke Martin's going to really help out the Grizzlies. It's not just in five-on-five five action and being a defenseman who can score from the blue line, uh, but you're also talking about a guy that can quarterback Utah's power play. And the Grizzlies only had one power play tonight, but it looked like they were able to generate a couple shots once they entered the offensive zone. And so I think that when you get some of those games where Utah gets more power play chances, I think Luke Martin's going to have even more of an impact than what he had tonight. I'm really disappointed that we didn't get to see a whole lot of the power play. Only one power play for Utah, but I mean, I, we knew this coming in. Idaho's a pretty disciplined team. They weren't going to give the Grizzlies those chances on the man advantage, but I think you're right. I think Luke Martin is going to be a big part on the power play. And in the, in the weeks prior, we were talking about how the power play really seemed to just kind of fizzled out, kind of struggled uh, ever since Andrew Nielsen left. And so you had a guy like Luke Martin. <laughs> I mean, we saw his shot. What a blast. I mean, you add that to the power play with his ability to pick his head up and find passing lanes and shooting lanes. I think that's a big addition to the power play. Only time will tell. I, I just wish we would have gotten to see a little bit more of that in this game. Wish we would have been able to see more of the ice. Uh, <laughs> Idaho's got a pretty good video feed, one of the better ones in the league, but we're just unfortunately at the mercy of it. And it's t- it was really tough to have any sort of flow throughout the course of the game, so we apologize to the listeners on YouTube. Uh, we just it was tough to describe at times, and it was tough to anticipate where the puck was going to be and identifying players on the fly when you're not entirely sure which five man unit is going to be out there from 
point to point because you never get to see the bench and see who's coming on and coming off. And, you know, we just tried to do the best we can and have a good time along the way. But uh, tonight, you know, the Grizzlies battled and picked up a standing point, and they're now tied for third with 68 standings points. And I got a feeling it's going to come down to that final week. And you got to get your tickets to Baverick Center because the Grizzlies, after Friday's game, it's the last road game of the regular season on Friday in Idaho. The Grizzlies will be home for the final four regular season games starting on Saturday night, Asian Islander or Pacific Island. Uh, it's uh, Asian American Pacific Islander night here at Maverick Center. A lot of fun stuff happening in and around the arena and during the intermissions. So that should be a lot of fun. Don't forget that the Tulsa Oilers will be in town for a three-game set to close out the regular season. Tulsa is in last place in the Mountain Division. Bud Light College night will be on Wednesday at 7 o'clock, and then Friday is going to be the final AFCU Friday of the season where tickets start just $8 when you pay using your AFCU debit or credit card at the Maverick Center box office. And Saturday night is going to be Fan Appreciation Night and Star Wars Night for the regular season finale and you're going to want to make sure to get your tickets for that Tulsa series because the Grizzlies are battling for a playoff spot once again as they look to defend their Mountain Division championship. And you can say that Idaho is not going to win the Mountain Division until they win two rounds in the playoffs. So for the Grizzlies, can they find a way to make you know, make the playoffs and do some damage once they get there and with the additions of Luke Martin, Kyle Mayhew, and Mick Messner to go along with the unit that I think is pretty talented. You know, Martell's really picked it up and has been outstanding and, Keaton Jamison providing a blue car effort and same with Tyler Penner. And you got guys like Pfizer and Cameron Wright and Brandon Cutler. I think the Grizzlies going to be a team to be reckoned with here come playoff time. You said it, Tyson. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, the Grizzlies, they're a fun team to watch right now. And I think the most thing, I think that makes them the most fun is uh, maybe that's not grammatically correct, but the funnest thing about the Grizzlies, maybe that's not grammatically correct either. Who's counting right now? But I mean, <laughs> I mean, the, the best thing about the Grizzlies right now is just the depth throughout the lineup. And you add guys like Mayhew, Messner, now Martin to the mix. I mean, we were talking about it before in the last broadcast, how it seems like every single time someone scores the first goal of the game, it's never seen, it's never the same guy. It's always someone different throughout the course of the lineup. And that's what makes the Grizzlies fun. It's just anybody on the ice at any given moment is dangerous. They're always going to be cooking up something. The Grizzlies are never out of game. We see just in the waning seconds of this game, oh, here come the Grizzlies, and they find a way to tie it up. So no matter the score, the Grizzlies seem to find a way to hang around in games. Every guy is absolutely lethal. And uh, the Grizzlies, they're just fun. They're fun to watch. And so I think with that in mind, and you got that series against Tulsa uh, and that one game against Idaho, I think you got to get your tickets. You're right. I mean, gosh, this thing is going to come right down to the wire. I think you need to be a part of it. I think you need to come down to Maverick Center and watch some Grizzlies hockey. Grizzlies are making a push for the playoffs. That's when the best hockey is played. Book your tickets. Come on down. Be part of Grizzmania here at Maverick Center for the end of the regular season. Utah does have one more road game. That's going to be on Friday night against the Idaho. Still had 650 pregame show. 710 face off, and Guy and I will be here at the lobby at Maverick Center trying to describe it on a laptop. Well, we hope you enjoyed the broadcast and not necessarily the final outcome. Once again, in two hours and 29 minutes and in front of a crowd of 5,181, the Idaho still has got a game-winning goal from Ty Pelton Bice 20 seconds into overtime. Grizzlies got goals from Jordan Martell and Luke Martin, who made his return to Utah as he was a key defenseman on the division championship club last season. And Luke Martin looked like he was as good as he'd ever been, wearing number 44 and scoring goals for the Grizzlies and It'll be, it'll be a force for the Grizzlies here the rest of the regular season and into the playoffs as Utah is now tied for third in the Mountain Division with Wichita and Kansas City, one point behind Allen for second place. So it should be a lot of fun. We'll do some scoreboard watching tomorrow. If you got Flow Sports, you can watch Rapid City and Wichita do battle in Mountain Division action, and that should be an interesting one as well as both teams are in the playoff picture. And we'll come back on Friday, and hopefully it'll be a fun one here for the final road game of the regular season. For Guy Carenza, I'm Tyson Whiting, and it is what it is.